Hello. Welcome to the Fanfic Majesty. If you want more content you can follow me on Patreon. I will be uploading more content on there that will be exclusive. The link is in the description. Please support me. 5 SS Chapter 101 The next trip to Beihai is confirmed. Previous chapter next chapter advertisement Although the Hayden 3 have just graduated and won the military rank, it should be a day of celebration. And Zepha also gave them three time to celebrate, just the night of that day. After yesterday's ceremony, Zepha immediately informed the three of them and will report to his office tomorrow morning so that he can tell them where the three should be sent next. Therefore, in only one night, the Hayden trio and Tina had a few more fun, so naturally they found a store in the town of Malin Vander to celebrate. Vertical day, morning. In front of the naval fortress entrance. Hash it at hash percent. After a night of partying last night, Hayden, who seemed to wake up from an electric shock this morning, greeted Small and Queedy in front of him. Although the state is vaguely spitting out syllables of ambiguous meaning from the mouth, it cannot be pieced together into words that people can understand. However, at this time, Smog and Queedy, who were in almost the same state as Hayden, were strangely able to understand what Hayden meant from the syllables he said. The two of them also responded with vague words. Three navies wearing navy justice coats were standing in front of the fortress. Let's go. Hayden shook his head vigorously, then said weakly. Um. X2 Smog and Kuidi didn't mean to say one more word. After that, the three of them walked together in front of Teacher ZFA's office, and their three squishy brains were emptied and returned to their normal state on the way. Advertisement then Hayden shook the handle of the door in front of him, pushed open with both hands, and walked in first, followed by Smog and Kuidi behind him. Teacher Zepha. X3 The three of Hayden stood together at the desk. Yeah. Zepha put down his work and looked at them. It looks good, little ghosts. Today, facing the three little ghosts, he put a smile on his face, and he stood up while talking at the desk. He he he. The three of Hayden suddenly laughed a little embarrassedly. I've always been wearing ordinary uniforms, but today I don't feel comfortable with this code of justice. Next, this will be your official task in the future. Zepha said, picking up a stack of papers from the table behind him. On it, he remembered the three people of Hayden, the place where each person will work, and some things to pay attention to. Zepha then handed the pre-arranged order to the three of Hayden. Look carefully, and tell me if you don't understand. Zepha sat back on the chair behind the desk, you will leave this afternoon, so ask if you have anything. After that, he continued to lower his head to deal with the work that he had just put down. After all, the general's daily schedule is full, and only this morning can he find time to do these paperwork. And the three Hayden who got the list also looked at it seriously, and the three of them sat down on the big sofa next to the wall. Hayden, Major General of the Headquarters, appointed as the base chief of the Beihai 353 branch, and set off for the Beihai 353 branch to take up his post immediately. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zai. Seeing three question marks slowly popping up above Hayden's head. What? Want me to stay in Beihai? Am I dazzled or something? Thinking of this, Hayden immediately rubbed his eyes, then fixed his eyes. Appointed as the base chief of the Beihai 353 branch, that's right. Hayden, who couldn't help but muttered, was stunned in an instant, since he didn't misunderstand him, why was he sent to Beihai? Advertisement even if it's not a new world, it should be the first half of the paradise. Where is the pirate in Beihai? The emotions in Hayden's heart suddenly became agitated, but he thought about it again, where are the two of Smogquidi? E.H. Where are you two going? He then asked quietly toward the two people who were sitting next to him looking down at the bill in his hand. Hearing Hayden's question, the two also looked up at him. I was sent to the base at the very beginning of the Great Route. Smog whispered. Me too, Queedy said immediately. What? Hayden suddenly became even more puzzled after hearing this. Then why am I sent to Beihai? He subconsciously said out. North Sea. After learning about Hayden, Smog and Queedy were equally puzzled. Both of them were sent to the Great Sea Route. Why Hayden was sent to the world? Doubts were written on the faces of all three of them at this time. He didn't know why he was thinking about it. Hayden stood up and walked towards Teacher Zepha who was writing something. Teacher Zepha, why did you send me to Beihai instead of the Great Route? Hayden tried his best to control his tone. 
Zephyr stopped his work, and he knew that Hayden would definitely ask why when he knew it, and he planned to tell the reason directly. Oh, that. Zephyr paused, and continued. The first reason is that there has been some turmoil in the North Sea recently, and you just happen to be able to support it. Second, you are too young. This is a decision made by the above, and you will be transferred back after a year or two. Zephyr finished in an unquestionable tone. What he said was what he thought. Recently, there has been a sound of wind on the Beihai side, just in time for Hayden this kid to exercise, and by the way, let him consolidate his strength by himself. Hayden's strength has grown faster than ordinary people, and his foundation is very unstable. Although the power that bursts out is very fierce, but if his foundation is a little more solid, then his strength will be stronger. Zephyr quickly flashed this thought in his mind. Advertisement. Seeing that teacher Zephyr didn't intend to withdraw or had a hint of wanting to change it, Hayden could only respond. Then Zephyr continued and said, After you turn over the red soil continent in the afternoon, you go directly to the G1 branch, and after you tell your name, there will be warships to escort you to the North Sea branch. Yes, Hayden responded listlessly. After that, Hayden went out of the room with Small and Queedy. At this time, Hayden suddenly changed his angle and thought, what good would it be for him to be sent to Beihai, it could not be all bad. First of all, since it is all over the world, there is definitely no pirate of the Great Sea Route as strong, but there is always a reward order on his head. Then, I went to Beihai with my strength to go to fried fish. While frying the fish, you can get redemption points by the way. There is extra time for the redemption skills to be proficient, which is simply beautiful. By the way, what is the situation in Beihai? It suddenly occurred to Hayden that he paused, but when he took the next step, he had already left the question behind him. Anyway, it might not be as good as me. Hayden does not remember much about the plot of Beihai in the comics. Hayden, whose emotions turned back in an instant, became excited. The Beihai is now a sea of points. Even if the points gained by defeating weaker pirates due to his own strength or less, he can't hold back more pirates. When the time comes, save up and add the 150 million pirates this time to get points, and directly come to a big one. Thinking about this, Hayden immediately greeted Smog and Queedy and took the first step. He wanted to quickly get his own exclusive transportation that he had asked to build before. It took him a while to assist with the remodeled transportation, and he could get it after thinking about it. Hayden's mind suddenly became a little flustered, he couldn't wait. Chapter 102 Urgent Help Message from the Navy Branch Previous chapter next chapter advertisement after Hayden had parted with Small, Kui D, Tina and the others, he carried only two Zanpaka knives all over his body and the mount he had just gotten on his way to the North Sea. This difference, I don't know when I want to get together in the future, but it is also inevitable. After that, Hayden went to the G1 branch of the New World on the other side. Although Hayden's trip was only passing through the New World, in a short period of time he also saw that the New World was more evil than the Paradise in the first half of the Great Route. The experience of coming to the New World for the first time left a deep impression on him. Today, Beihai. On a naval ship just sailing out of the Windless Zone. The forefront of the deck of a warship. Okay kid. The supreme commander of this warship. Lieutenant Admiral of the Dalmesian Navy Headquarters, said to Hayden who was lying on the couch beside him. Now we are in the North Sea. He wore a Dalmatian hat on top of his head, also known as the Dalmatian hat. Under his coat of justice is his tall and burly figure, always maintaining the orc form of animal fruit. Thinking about it now, he still feels a little strange, but he didn't expect that this escort mission would be escorted by him. Turning his head to look at the terrifying young-looking Navy next to him, Dalmesia suddenly remembered in his mind that when he returned to the headquarters, he often saw the little kid that Quadina was looking for. Unexpectedly, only a few years later, that little kid has grown into a major admiral of the navy headquarters. Dalmesia couldn't help sighing the passage of time, hey, uncle dog, why are you sighing? After hearing the words of the uncle in front of him, Hayden removed the sunshade book on his face and looked up at the admiral in front of him who had always maintained the form of an orc, that is, Kui Di's dad asked casually. It was precisely because he was an acquaintance that Hayden didn't care about the attitude issues between the superior and inferior of the navy, and he didn't like the presence of a guy who was bigger than him and had an attitude. Advertisement, it's nothing. 
Daomija was still looking at the blue waters ahead, and he replied. It's that you, the kid of the year, was promoted to major general. When I first received this task, I didn't believe it. E.H. Uncle Dog. Time waits for no one, no one. Talking casually, Hayden got up from the recliner. After that, he picked up the two Zanpo knives leaning against the recliner, Uncle Dog, do you want a drink? I'm going to get a coke. He asked, and started walking down the bow. No, Dalmesia answered Hayden quickly. He did not turn around and still looked at the sea in front of him, and continued. Beihai 353 branch is not far from this windless zone. We should be there soon. He wanted to remind Hayden that it is almost time to prepare for him. Something out. Know it, Hayden's casual voice followed immediately behind him. Dalmesia shook his head helplessly, this kid. Just at this time. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. The emergency phone worm in the cabin of the warship suddenly made a rush of blue 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 sound. The seaman guarding the emergency phone worm also naturally understood what the sound was like, his nerves tense instantly, and he picked up the receiver as quickly as possible. Immediately before he could speak, the voice from the other end of the phone worm came out immediately. This is the Bay High 353 naval branch. We. Our base was attacked by a group of pirates who escaped from the windless zone. Help. Repeat. This is the Bay High 353 naval branch. Our base was attacked by a group of pirates who escaped from the windless zone. Ask for help. The voice on the other end of the phone worm suddenly stopped. From the other end came the sound of misery mixed with the sound of gunfire. Advertisement The marine soldier who was receiving the message with the receiver was stunned, and he reacted immediately after the next second. He threw down the receiver and hurriedly pushed the door and rushed out of the room. Lord Admiral! Lord Admiral! While running in the corridor, he shouted loudly, he must inform the lieutenant general as quickly as possible. And the other seamen he met wherever he went, their faces changed drastically, and they stopped their work immediately. Because they knew exactly what the yelling navy was doing on the ship, if he had such a situation, it would mean that something bad had happened. Lord Admiral, Lieutenant General, stop. Within a few seconds, Dalmesia heard the noisy movement on the ship, and then flashed to the place where the movement sounded intercepting the shouting navy. Then his eyes condensed, and he noticed that the navy should be guarding the phone worm, which also meant. What happened? Dalmesia immediately asked in a low voice, and at the same time comforted him, calm down, marine. After the lieutenant admiral's calm and steady aura was infected and relieved, he smoothed the violently undulating chest. Lord General, I just received a request for help from the Beihai 353 naval branch. He said that they were attacked by a group of pirates who escaped from the windless zone, and they will soon be unable to hold it. He hurried out this long paragraph without breaking his breath. What? Dalmisha was surprised when he heard the news, isn't that the destination of the waiting? Are you sure? Branch 353? He wanted to confirm with the Navy again? Advertisement, yes, it's Branch 353. The Navy who sent the order was quite sure that the number he heard was correct. Dalmesia's face sank in an instant, huh? Dot the scum that escaped from the new world, he murmured. He didn't ask any more, waved his hand to signal that the seaman in front of him retreat, and then he started walking to the control room. The sudden chaos on the warship did not escape Hayden's ears. As soon as Hayden in the cabin galley felt that the atmosphere was not right, he hurried out of the galley. Seeing the busy marines in front of him, Hayden hurriedly ran to the control room after holding a marine to get the situation, because Uncle Dalmesia would definitely be here. Uncle Dog, where's my motorcycle? Hayden, who was standing at the door looking at the back of Uncle Dalmesia, immediately asked. He wanted to hurry to the base, but he didn't want to get there by the time the pirates blasted the base into ruins. Hayden. Dalmesia also immediately turned and looked in Hayden's direction. What are you going to do? Do you want to go alone? Of course. No, Dalmesia who guessed Hayden's idea in a second, he felt that this idea was very unreliable. There is no intelligence about the group of pirates who attacked the naval base. I don't know how much it is, how much money it is offering, or how strong it is. When everything is unknown, even in the mood of eagerly trying to rescue, but letting him go alone, this kind of thing is not too worrying. Chapter 103 The Silver Horse Across the Blue Sea
Previous chapter next chapter advertisement, absolutely not. Without thinking about it, Dalmesia refused. Uncle? After Hayden was shocked, his expression instantly became serious. He immediately replied, Uncle, I'm serious. Let me go alone. My speed is much faster than this warship. I can block it first, and then guard until you come over. That's not okay. Dalmesia continued to refuse without hesitation. Do you know the information of the pirate? There are many people or few people? And have you ever thought about the extent to which the pirates can be brought out from the new world through the windlass? Could it be that your newly graduated navy can handle it? He then vomited a lot of rhetorical questions, he would never let this newly graduated kid go alone. The pirates of the new world are unimaginable cruelty by this kid, and the attacking pirates group can escape from the windlass belt. Whether it is luck or strength, you must be careful next. The other lieutenants in the control room watched the two officers on the ship who were their superiors start to quarrel. After a while, Hayden really couldn't persuade the uncle, so he had to resort to the last resort. Hayden stared at the uncle without a trace of loose eyes, he began to release the spiritual pressure that he usually suppressed so hard. In just the blink of an eye, the feeling of the control room room changed instantly, and Hayden's unique spiritual pressure gradually invaded the space in the room. Uncle. Even if I can't match the attacking pirates, I can stop them until you come. Advertisement. At this time, Hayden's words seemed to be heavy, and they pressed on the rest of the school lieutenants in the room, causing them to hold their breath and try their best to keep their bodies from being overwhelmed. Ryatsu also pressed on Lieutenant General Dalmesia's body, but he only felt a little heavy on his shoulders. Boy. The sudden strange situation in front of him made Dalmesia's face dignified and muttered. He looked at the subordinate next to him to the left, and looked at the subordinate next to him on the right. Then they found that they were about to be pressed all over by some inexplicable feeling, and it seemed that they were about to be unable to support them. When Dalmisha noticed this, he returned his gaze to Hayden, and the feeling in the air was obviously the fame made by the Hayden imp. At the same time, this gradually changed his mind. After a moment of silence, your thing is in the equipment bay, Dalmisha said calmly, remember. When you encounter it, you feel that the situation is not right, then stick to the defense and keep it until we arrive. Understand. After getting permission, Hayden immediately withdrew Ryatsu. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zai. And the sense of oppression in the space of this room disappeared without a trace, and the lieutenants who were almost unable to resist suddenly relaxed and were able to breathe. Then Hayden hurriedly found the Marines and took him to the equipment cabin. As soon as he entered, Hayden noticed that the thing placed in the middle of the cabin was something covered with a large tarp. That is, his Mount Yinju. Hayden immediately stepped forward and violently lifted the tarpaulin covering him with both hands. Then his eyes showed a motorcycle of the world's super running type before. The body was painted silver all over, as if it was shining all the time. Before building this car, Hayden simply drew the outline of the large displacement supercar that he had seen before and then asked them to add a device that could use ice to provide power. Advertisement I didn't expect it to be so handsome. After touching the handlebars, Hayden directly picked up the entire motorcycle in one hand, then took out the equipment compartment and onto the deck. At this time, Lieutenant General Dalmesia also came to the deck, Hayden said that this thing could allow him to walk through the sea, but he has not seen the concrete performance of this thing. Similarly, the other navies who were ready for battle on the surrounding decks were also thinking about what the major general would do if he took out a motorcycle. The direction of the 353 branch is right north, remember not to go wrong. Dalmesia reminded Hayden. Then he asked again, Hayden, are you sure you can use this thing? He was a little curious. After Hayden nodded and expressed his understanding, he stepped on the locomotive and parked it sideways on the side of the warship. Chianban Sakura was placed on his back, and Shiryuki's sleeve was unsheathed in her right hand. Oh, of course I am sure. He turned his upper body back and said with a smile to the people on the deck. After speaking, he didn't pay attention to the reaction of everyone behind him. Hayden inserted the frosty sleeve Baishui into the locomotive under him at this time. In the position where the locomotive was originally the fuel tank, there was a socket just enough to accommodate the sleeve Baishui blade. Let's start, Shiryuki Shu. Hayden murmured and squeezed the throttle on his right handle. At once, 
The silver horse on Hayden's body began to rattle, roaring, Om, Om. Immediately after the sleeve Baishui inserted, a layer of frost slowly spread, extending to the front and rear wheels, freezing the two rubber tires, and attaching a layer of ice. Hayden turned the front of the car to the direction of the sea, then suddenly lifted and twisted the accelerator. At this time, the only frozen rear wheel in contact with the real thing suddenly rotated, splashing layers of ice. Advertisement Hayden tried his best to control the agitation of the beast below him, and then he turned back to look at the stunned crowd on the deck. See you later, everyone. After talking, Hayden turned the accelerator, and then jumped into the air under the strong ejection force. Next second. Hayden fell straight to the sea. The frozen wheels at the front and back immediately froze the sea that they were touching, and in an instant it froze an icy road for Hayden to travel. As the locomotive travels faster and faster, the trend of freezing also speeds up, always moving forward with the wheels to prevent the locomotive from falling into the sea. And everyone on the deck watched the major general jump straight into the sea on a motorcycle, and everyone quickly gathered to the side of the ship, lying on the side wanting to know what happened next. Then what was reflected in each of them was the scene of Hayden riding a locomotive quickly rushing to the distant waters. Are you kidding? What it is? The frozen wheels not only froze the sea surface, but also crushed the frozen sea surface. At this time, the exhaust pipe behind the locomotive is not exhausting gas, but ice and snow like an avalanche. Crushed ice scum. Hayden in this scene is almost like a silver horse running on the sea, drawing a long track at extreme speed. The wind kept blowing through Hayden's body, blowing the code of justice behind him. I hope it's not too late. Hayden, whose eyes were always fixed on the front, thought silently in his heart. Chapter 104 Support arrived unexpectedly previous chapter. Next chapter Advertisement 353 North Sea Branch of the Navy. At first, because the island is located close to the windless zone, there may occasionally be lost super large sea kings coming out of the windless zone. Moreover, the geographical location of the North Sea is separated from the New World only by the Windless Zone in the second half of the Great Sea Route, although it is really unlikely that the pirates of the New World will pass through the Windless Zone. However, when the Navy was building this 353 branch, the entire island was built into a naval base just in case. A total of 50 or 60 cannons were placed on the island, surrounded by towering copper walls and iron walls, and only one opening could enter. However, after the completion of the construction, it will develop as normal. The elapsed time told the Navy on this naval branch base that there was no need for security. After the super large Neptune that got lost accidentally came out, they directly ignored the island, and after wandering around, they went back to the windless zone by themselves. As for the pirates of the New World, from the day the construction of this base was completed, no pirates attacked at all. The pirates of the North Sea did not intend to attack a naval fortress that looked fierce. In this way, the New World pirates who could be stronger than this fortress did not come, and the North Sea pirates who could not beat this fortress were not interested in the place where the whole island is a navy branch. Slowly, this navy branch became a place suitable for elderly care. The navy on the island began to loosen up, seeming to forget that they were still wearing a navy uniform. Apart from the daily patrol of the surrounding waters by fishing for fish every week, the navy on the island had no sense of being a navy at all. There is still a rumor circulating among the navy in this branch of the navy. As long as it is the navy sent to this branch, it means that he is a bit of a taste of the navy, and it is a pity that it is just like them. The fate of the navy that came here was, to lead the wages, nothing more. However, time goes to now. What the Navy on the 353 branch did not expect is. At noon when the sky is clear and suitable for basking in the sun, an explosion sounded on the naval island with copper walls and iron walls, which shook the iron walls. Advertisement a seaman who was supposed to be on duty as a watchtower on the outer high wall, he was not on duty when the explosion sounded. Instead, he found a beach chair and placed it on the ground outside, drinking an ice drink with sunglasses enjoying a pleasant time. The explosion that resounded throughout the navy branch naturally reached him, and he was shocked to drop his sunglasses. The sound of the explosion that hadn't been heard for a long time immediately pulled the second-class soldier from the observation post back to the past, and he suddenly remembered that it was the sound of a shell exploding. The private immediately looked in the direction of the sound, 
which was the location of the watchtower on the other side of the outer high wall. Fire and smoke were already rising there at this time, and the observation post at that location had been blown to pieces, and of course the marine soldiers there had no chance of survival. Ruined. The second class hurriedly looked at the outer sea at this time, and suddenly found a dilapidated and huge ship on the sea. The flag above the mast of the ship was flying with a black flag with skulls. Pirate ship. The second class soldier who realized in an instant panicked, but he ran into the nearby guard box at the last minute and sounded the alarm. Then, one after another shots fired by the huge pirate ship landed on this naval island, and the screams continued for a while. Only then did the navy who realized it began to fight back, shooting out with a large number of cannons on the island. The sea area where the pirate ship was anchored was also within the range of the cannon on the island, and both sides could attack each other's distance. But the navy on the island is only the navy of the North Sea, and their opponents are pirates from the New World, even if they have been tortured by the Windless Zone. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, the navy on the island was almost unable to hold on under the fierce artillery fire, and even the outer high walls had already been blown up at this time, and many large holes appeared. But the navy's shelling did not help. The pirates on the pirate ship, relying on their respective abilities and the flexibility of only one ship, prevented most of the shelling, and the remaining less accurate shelling fell into the sea. The Beihai 353 naval branch now has no way to withstand the pirates' attack, and they have only hope in their hearts at this time. In the morning, I talked to the warships of the G1 branch of the New World that were about to come. After sending out an emergency request for help, I only hope that the supporting warships can catch up. Now, advertisement. The 353 branch, which struggled to resist the pirates' artillery fire, was five minutes after they issued an emergency call for help. Then, buzz, buzz, a roar that was also very ear-blasting amidst the fierce artillery fire on both sides suddenly came from the distant sea. Just in time, Hayden, with his upper body leaning on the locomotive, stared at the situation ahead at the moment and thought in his heart. The front left is obviously a small island in the navy territory, and the huge ship moving in front of the right is obviously a pirate ship, and Hayden has cleared the situation in the waters ahead at a glance. At this moment, in the small space where a cannon is placed on the navy island. Look, sir. A seaman who was carrying a shell ready to be loaded into the muzzle, he immediately noticed the sight of something powerful rushing over the sea. Look at you asshole. Don't hurry up and load me shells. Do you want to die kid? The officer next to him yelled at him without even thinking about it, this recruit is just unreliable. But he also looked at the direction of the recruit's finger. What it is? There seems to be something strange rushing over the sea. Hey hey hey. The motion of the waves splashing could not be a super large sea king type under the sea surface. The arrival of Hayden was not only realized by the navy on the island, but also on the pirate ship. As Hayden approached quickly, his own figure was blurred by a huge ice storm from behind his locomotive. At this time, as the distance narrowed, he gradually appeared in the eyes of the two warring parties. The movement is not a weird thing, it's a person. And it's still a navy, a navy that rides a galloping horse on the sea. Advertisement. Is that our support? Great. We are saved. Don't die. Don't die. The navy on the island was instantly excited by the arrival of the support, and the lifeless atmosphere pervading the island was also dispersed. Damn it. That man in the navy at sea is definitely not a messy guy. Hayden's arrival caused different reactions on the pirate ship. Of course they can see a navy that dares to make such a big movement on the sea alone. This navy is definitely not a trash navy. Although these pirates are all from the New World, they look down on the navy of the Four Seas. But now not only was their energy exhausted when they passed through the windless zone, the casualties on the ship were also very bad, not to mention the pirate ship they were riding on, which was nearly scrapped. Regardless of the strength of the new navy, as long as he has the ability to punch the pirate ship out with a single blow, then the pirates on their ships will have nowhere to escape. Lost the ground on the sea, even if they were helpless. Quickly divide a part of the muzzle for the navy, and slam him into the sea. The captain of the pirate ship immediately issued the order, and at the same time, he commanded the attack on the island and strengthened him. While firing the cannon, he charged straight towards the navy island in front of him. Shoo. 
The round black shells fell into the sea on both sides, blowing up waves. The silver horse under the seat of Hayden's controller swayed from side to side, and after drawing a beautiful curve on the seat, it easily dodges every shell that hits it effortlessly. Chapter 105 The Savior Who Rides a Silver Horse to the Sky Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement The situation on the court changes rapidly. The pirate ship had already sailed to the sea near the branch, and seemed to be able to rush into the copper wall and iron wall that had been blasted away by them in the next second. At the same time, Hayden has also quickly approached. At this time, the three parties are like vying around the only import and export strait of this navy island, with it as the center. The location of the pirate ship is to the east of the center, and Hayden's location is to the south of the center. At this time, the position from the center point is the same, it depends on which side is faster. But precisely because of the appearance of Hayden who seemed to be in front of him at this moment, the navy on the island began to fall into despair again. The only support in his sight was this one, and he did not follow the navy warships behind him. There was really only this one navy support who did not know where it came from. This time is really over. How can he be the only one to stop that huge pirate ship? We are not saved. The navy who understood the fate of the future suddenly sank, and the sense of lifelessness that disappeared would become more intense and swept back. Even if the navy here makes such a big movement, it looks very powerful, but how can he fight the pirate ship that can knock him to pieces by just passing by? At this time, the marines in the combat post couldn't even bear to look at the outer waters, and couldn't bear to watch the cruel end of the navy that came here to support them. It can be expected that the next moment the pirate ship will crush the navy and enter this naval branch without any hindrance. The roar of constant shelling and the vibration of the floor below their feet could no longer affect the mood of everyone. They have accepted the fate's arrangement for them, or maybe this is the punishment for what God has done to them. They have given up the resistance in their hands. Advertisement. However, seeing the pirate ship dared to prepare to enter so boldly, Hayden could not allow this to happen. What should I say when I report the situation, saying that the pirates swaggered into my home base on the first day I took office? No no no. Hayden can't stand this. Hayden, who was approaching quickly, had an idea in his heart. He immediately squeezed the accelerator of his right hand again, and the beast under the seat suddenly let out a more violent roar, and immediately responded after the car body, bursting out an ice and snowstorm that was even crazier than before. The speed of the locomotive under the seat was full for a short time, the rev counter burst, and the front of the powerful locomotive suddenly lifted, lifting its wild head. And this was exactly what Hayden wanted, and he immediately pointed the front of the car at the sea between the island and the pirate ship. Power Max Ice Giant Wall. Boom. After a roar, Yinju's appearance turned into a stream of light. Under the two wheels of Hayden's locomotive at this time, a shocking icy breath broke out, and a thick block of ice instantly froze. Under his control, the icing trend gradually increased and gradually increased. The beast under the seat also followed the high slope it created as if it was going straight to the sky, and the coat of justice he was wearing instantly rose into the sky. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, the streamer quickly passed the space between the island and the pirate ship at this time, and then faded in the air here. Then, in front of the large number of navy on the small island and all the pirates on the pirate ship at this time. In everyone's sights, they all saw the same scene at this time. A huge, slanting ice wall suddenly appeared above the sea in front of them. The shallow and transparent shell contained a terrifying deep chill, and neither side could see through the ice wall that appeared out of nowhere. The same thing as just looking at the ice wall from a certain distance, the naked eye exuding from the ice wall also makes people unable to raise the idea of taking a closer look. Advertisement. At some point, the cold air has spread and invaded the bodies of both parties. For a moment, the air in the field suddenly fell silent, and everyone's time seemed to be frozen. Just. What happened just now? A branch major couldn't believe his eyes when he looked at the scene in front of him, and wondered if he was dazzled. Sir. Sir. Does this mean we are saved? A recruit next to him looked at the scene in front of him and asked in a daze. However, none of the navy present at this time could answer. Look at the pirate ship again. Who made this ghost thing? Seeing that it was about to attack, 
unexpected conditions suddenly appeared. The captain of the pirate immediately became furious. He hadn't seen anything in the new world. This bit of ice. This bit of ice. Ice cubes, alone, on the sea. These factors were connected together in his mind in an instant, and he clicked, thinking of this, he suddenly thought of something. It, couldn't it be the monster navy frozen fruit ability? Thinking of this Captain Pirate, his body instantly stiffened. Even if he ran into that monster navy in a state of full blood, he knew that he would be dead if he ran into it. At this time, the bow of the pirate ship just hit the ice wall, and after a slight collision sound, the ice wall didn't mean to split, and it seemed that there was no trace of it. The pirate captain Huo Ran raised his head and looked at the top of the ice wall that was as high as the mast of his pirate ship. There was a guy half hidden by the air conditioner. But judging from what was exposed, that guy seemed to be the navy that came from the sea just now, he thought. At this time, all the navies on the island also discovered that there was a person on the platform on the top of the ice wall, and the word, justice, was written behind the person who was facing them. Advertisement. Are we saved? The people sluggishly looked at each other's eyes and understood what was thinking in each other's heart at this time. Even their marines can understand the situation on the field at the moment, and create such a huge navy. It must be the guy from the New World branch that has this power. The navy of that person just now is their support. We are saved. In the next second, the navy could not help cheering, dancing, dancing, crying excitedly. The movement of the gathering was so great that Hayden, who was parked on the top of the ice wall, could hear it. Fortunately to catch up, Hayden, who had stopped at this moment, released the grips of both hands, and then wiped the cold sweat from his forehead. Then he looked at the pirate ship ahead and below. The hull of the pirate ship has already reached a very serious degree of damage, and I don't know how to keep the ship from sinking into the sea. The observing Hayden thought to himself, and then he heard the question from the pirate ship below. The guy above, what's your background? Hearing the question in a hoarse voice below, Hayden couldn't help feeling funny, as if it was Captain Pirate telling a joke. Hayden got off the locomotive and walked to the ice wall. Then, squatting down by the ice wall, Hayden, who looked down, saw a group of pirates standing on the deck of the pirate ship at this time. The pirates had broken clothes and were all messed up, as if they hadn't slept well for a few days and ate good food. Seeing that Hayden smiled even more, he then pulled out Chinbin Sakura from behind and carried the back of the sword on his shoulders. The corner of his mouth raised an arrogant arc, and the captain of the ship, who was obviously the captain among the pirates, answered his question. Lao Tzu is your god of death, pirate. Chapter 106 Don't you look down on me. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. You navy can't wait to find death. What's so special about our god of death? Navy, I can't wait to kill you. Hayden's provocative words immediately evoked the reaction of the pirates on the pirate ship below, and each of them was excited and yelled at the same time, and their ghost screams mixed in. The pirates don't know what the navy of the four seas above has to rely on, so they dare to speak to them from the new world like this. Is it the ice wall under him? Or is he really eager to find death? Or is it that the navy, which looks very young, has not seen the world? But it doesn't hurt that they want to shred the navy's heart. In the afternoon, the sun was dazzling. The golden sun was projected from high above without restriction, and under the cloudless conditions, the scorching sun reached the dazzling and hottest moment of the day. However, the captain of the pirate who was standing on the deck of the pirate ship could still slightly see who was standing on the top of the ice wall. F.K. The one above is not the frozen fruit ability of the navy monster, the navy looks like a young soldier who has just graduated. The captain of the pirate, who caught the appearance of the ice wall in Shanghai, understood this in an instant. Although I don't know where the chicken navy comes from, the ability is the same as that of the frozen fruit, but as long as it is not from the monster navy, their ship is a pirate from the new world. The captain of the pirate, who figured it out in the blink of an eye, his emotions returned to his original appearance. Although he was very embarrassed when he came out of the windless belt, they are not the, little ghost, the navy can deal with now, of. After seeing it clearly, the silent captain of the pirate looked at Hayden above and opened his mouth, you said it was Lao Tzu's god of death. Navy. His tone was flat as if Hayden had not provoked him just now. Advertisement. 
Since you are not the monster with the ability to freeze fruit, Hayden at the moment is almost dead in the eyes of the pirate captain, and of course he can't arouse his mood swings. At the same time, his mouth was like an absolute order, and the clamoring pirates around also instantly quieted down, letting their boss speak. Suddenly, in the area where Hayden and the pirate ship were located, the atmosphere seemed to become weird. The clamor of the pirates caused Hayden to temporarily block his ears. After all, no one would like a group of chickens and ducks quacking in their ears. But seeing the lips of the captain of the pirate move, he could barely listen to the last words of the group of pirates. What else? He stared at the captain of the pirate below with a puzzled expression. Just now the captain of the pirate stopped after asking, Hayden was still waiting. Huh. Seeing the Navy's indifferent attitude toward them, the captain of the pirate suddenly got cold and didn't intend to pester the Navy anymore. Lao Tzu is the god of death who reaps the life of your god of death. He said. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, shot. After the pirate captain finished speaking, he immediately stretched out his hand in the direction of Hayden on the ice wall and motioned for his men to shoot at him. Boom. 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 At once. At the very least, all the pirates who had dozens of people on the deck quickly took out their long spears or pistols. The flames of dozens of guns never stopped, one bullet after another, and the rain of bullets that did not stop immediately exploded in the direction of Hayden. Uh, advertisement. Hayden stunned for a moment and didn't understand what the group of pirates wanted to do. Is your attack method just shooting? Don't you look down on my freezing effect? If you use a gun to attack, can you look down on me? While Chinbin Sakura in his hand blocked the incoming bullet swiftly, Hayden changed his mind without panic. Or maybe it's like they haven't eaten for a few days, and they don't have the clothes to change, so they have no strength to use their skills. Where did the group of pirates come from? How did they look like a tramp? When Hayden was a little curious about what they had experienced, the attack of the deck thief suddenly stopped. Captain, it seems that none of the bullets hit the navy. Seeing that the swordsman shook his hands and blocked all their bullets, a pirate standing next to the pirate captain whispered and told him the captain. The pirate captain was not blind, and naturally he saw the same situation seen by the men on the deck. What's special? I don't have eyes. The captain immediately yelled at the pirate next to him. His mood seemed to change suddenly and instantly, becoming irritable and restless. I thought I could get out of the windless belt, and then God gave him a gift. In my own situation, he came across a naval base as soon as he came out. Even if all of their staff have no one in ten strength, but facing the naval branch of the world, this is a place that can be easily won, and it can just let them get repaired supplies. But I didn't expect that their support came just when the navy turf was about to be taken, and depending on the current situation of the navy swordsman, there was only one person coming to support him. Now there are two possibilities before them. Advertisement. One is that the navy is just the vanguard, and real support will soon follow. One is that the navy that came alone is their support. Judging from the navy's calm look, maybe his strength has not been fully demonstrated and their current real situation does not need to be really stronger than their navy to solve them. The experienced pirate captain then thought of a series of possible situations in his mind. He looked at the ice wall in front of him that blocked the way for the pirate ship. Although the ice wall was not long, it could not simply go around. They were now stuck here. If you delay here for another second, it is very likely that their pirate career will be confessed here. It is not the first half of the paradise, nor the new world, but the whole world that is even more paradise than the paradise. Thinking of this, the captain of the pirate, who immediately became impatient, couldn't care about other things at this time, and it would be troublesome to be delayed by the navy for a second. Little ones, go up with Lao Tzu to kill the navy. The pirate captain screamed and exploded with a life-burning attack. His aura suddenly surged in a dilapidated state. He took the lead and slammed on the deck, leaping fiercely into Hayden's direction. Boom. 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 The pirates behind him also followed the captain's pace closely, bursting into a completely different aura, kicking the ground and jumping high. F.K. Hayden, who was squatting on the edge of the ice wall, immediately widened his eyes, and he couldn't believe the sight in front of him. The group of pirates who were dressed like the beggars just now burst into such a strong aura. 
The pirate ship they were standing on at this time couldn't bear the strength of their slam step on the deck and jumped up. A crack appeared in an instant, which gradually increased, and finally burst into a crack. This group of pirates is definitely not unknown, and certainly not the pirates of the North Sea. Chapter 107 Night in the Sky, The Attack is Over Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement Hayden confirmed his thoughts immediately. This is a different concept from the 100 million bounty he had faced before and the feeling of a Shanghai thief. If you are not serious, you will die. Seeing the attacks that seemed to cover all the areas ahead at the moment, Hayden began to solve Shiban Sakura in an instant. The blade of Senban Sakura instantly turned into a thin blade with countless petals, bursting out like a surging ocean wave. However, looking at the group attack that was about to hit him immediately, Hayden didn't want to attack, he didn't want to attack either. If he chose to attack at this moment, no matter how fast he was, he wouldn't be able to dodge one of the attacks. As a result, he immediately controlled the countless thin blades that turned into waves, all gathered around his body, strengthening the defensive power of a circular area with a radius of 85 centimeters centered on himself, that is, the uninjured circle. The thin blades of cherry blossom petals surrounding him turned into a huge ball in a blink of an eye. He didn't think that if he didn't use his full defense, he would be able to withstand the group attack of this group of pirates who had surpassed their previous cognitive strength. Hayden immediately jumped onto the locomotive behind him, and at the same time, the attack that gathered a huge energy also hit the cherry blossom ball that wrapped him. Then the cherry blossom ball transformed by countless thin blade storms suddenly dented, and Hayden riding on the locomotive could even see that the attack of the pirates was about to pierce through the defensive circle. Bad, seeing the situation getting worse, Hayden slammed the accelerator, and the power of Shirayuki's sleeve inserted in the body responded instantly. The beast roaring under the seat suddenly burst out a strong chill, exaggerating it, and immediately enveloping the numerous thin blades on the periphery at the moment, once again increasing its defense. But Hayden didn't plan to stay here for another second. Advertisement. See you again Nima. Hayden hit the accelerator again, and broke through the defensive circle directly. Immediately, the roaring beast flew high into the air, and the two frozen wheels under the car that had not touched the ground began to spin idling. At this moment, the defensive ball behind Hayden lost his control, and after a click, it was destroyed by the pirate's attack and turned into broken ice crystals. Hayden then condensed the Link Sea mass under the body of the locomotive under the seat, so that the locomotive had a place to drive. Then, numerous navies on the island are observing the rapidly changing situation on the ice wall. They saw the navy riding a silver colt that could freeze the sea under the hips, riding on the sky at this moment. I saw something. What is that? Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, sir, do I have my eyes blurred? The numerous naval responses on the island were similar. It's the same thing for the navy that came to support just now to ride over from the sea. Maybe there is some special device, but... But what is it like to ride in the empty sky? There is obviously no device on the motorcycle that can provide flight, but the thing can be like riding on the ground, as if you can step on the air. At this time, the group of pirates who attacked the ice wall also discovered that they did not attack the navy, they hit nothing, and hit the air. At the same time, the howling sound of Hayden getting off the locomotive also made them notice him. Captain. Who is the navy? Advertisement. A question tremblingly sounded among the crowd of pirates on the ice wall. Except for the pirate who couldn't help asking, the expressions on the faces of the other pirates were almost the same. This is the case of, violating common sense. It happened before their eyes. Even if they knew that someone in the navy would use that sick style, they could fly with only their bodies, but the scene in front of them deeply shocked their minds. Just as the navy on the island observed, even they, who were not far from Hayden's position at the moment, could not find anything that would allow the navy to ride in the air on a motorcycle. Captain. The navy will soon be on the island. At this time, one of the pirates suddenly realized this, and he quickly reminded his captain. If the navy is allowed to occupy the dominant position, it will be even more difficult for them. Oh shit. Captain Pirate then came back to his senses, hurry up and call Lao Tzu. Give me any tricks. His anger at this time can no longer be explained in words. How dare this navy, 
dare to engage their pirate group, and run away. But also because Hayden ran one step first, and the location of the ice wall was still some distance away from the island, the pirates did not dare to risk falling into the sea to attack Hayden who was going away. As a result, the pirates had to use their own long-range methods to aim at Hayden's fast-moving figure and shoot past. But this is only a means of despair in their last moments. Dot dot dot. This is the end of you pirates who should go to hell. At this time, without the pirates realizing it, Lieutenant Admiral Dalmesia of the Navy headquarters had already rushed to the battlefield. Together with his adjutant, they stepped on the moon step and hung on the left side of the ice wall where the pirates were standing at the moment. At the same time, all the guns of the warships coming from the sea below were aimed at the pirate group above. And Dalmesia stared at the captain of the pirate, and opened his claws shining with terrifying black light. Advertisement. It's over. This is the same idea in the hearts of many pirates, including the captain. Not only did one possible guess of the pirate captain become a reality, he also guessed another possibility, and the real support is now here. Looking at these imposing high-ranking navies, their group of pirates, who didn't have much energy left, was completely finished. As a result, the pirates on the ice wall seemed to be forced to the edge of the cliff, and their hands slowly dropped. At the same time Hayden also stopped. He would just stop at a place on the top of the high wall on the island that had not been destroyed. Feeling the momentum of the uncle and his officers and soldiers, he subconsciously looked back and got off the locomotive. It's just right, uncle. Hayden murmured while looking at the direction of the ice wall in front of him. Dot dot dot. After that, Dalmesia handcuffed the captured pirates one by one to his warship. The large number of pirates didn't count until the warship was full. Then Dalmesia let the warship sail into this naval branch. After all, this sudden pirate accident, no one could have imagined. If they just left after sending Hayden, this naval branch that was almost smashed into a sieve by shelling might be occupied by the pirates who heard the news within a day. After a few days of repairing here, Hayden can get familiar with the environment, and then they can leave. The movement made by Hayden just now can be seen from a distance by Dalmesia on the warship. He believes that afterwards, it will be enough for Hayden to stay here alone. Chapter 108 It's hard for me to do it like this. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. It wasn't until the mid-configuration foreign ship warship from the headquarters of the New World sailed into the dock of the Beihai 353 naval branch. The navy that survived the baptism of artillery fire on the island, they were stunned, and the thick shadow that hung over this naval base instantly disappeared. This is finally over for a terrible event that they may not experience several times in their lives. The gangway on the warship made a bang when it got on the shore, just like the sound of the end, and suddenly. We are saved. Wow ah 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 Driven by an inexplicable feeling, the navy gathered uncontrollably to the side of the dock, all of them cheered, and the navy who stepped down from the warship was excited at this moment. The cheers of the large number of marines suddenly gathered at this moment into a huge momentum, as if they could completely overturn the remaining dilapidated base. Lieutenant General Dalmesia stepped off the warship with his men and stood calmly on the shore. Everyone gave them applause and gratitude. Although their hearts were also infected by the atmosphere at this moment, they still maintained good discipline and controlled their emotions. At the same time, there was still a trace of fear in their hearts. If it hadn't been for Hayden's little devil himself to rush over and delay for some time, given the time they arrived just now, it was likely that the pirates had already attacked the island. The consequences. Dalmesia and others could not imagine. At this time. Advertisement. The. Buzzing. Sound came from above the pier where they were standing at the moment. Everyone present immediately looked up, and then noticed a silver-white trajectory quickly sliding down from the incomplete tall iron wall around the gap. Then, the silver-white trajectory stopped in the middle of the field, and the white mist around the thing was blown away by him, revealing the figure in it. Yo, Uncle, Hayden, who was straddling on the locomotive, pulled out his sleeve by Shui, pulled a sword flower and then inserted it into the scabbard on his back, it's time to come. Hai got off the locomotive and greeted Dalmesia, who would be standing on the shore of the warship, with a smile. Is this the one that saved us just now? This momentum this appearance, this chilling chill.
Stupid. This is not the navy or who. Suddenly, such a maverick navy that I had never seen before immediately caused the seamen of the surrounding naval branch to talk about it, but invariably lowered their voices and whispered. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, the unexpected way of appearance, the peculiar ability, and the last scene called a miracle, it seems that all things contrary to common sense appeared in this navy. The combination of these kinds of things really has to make them feel shocked, even at this moment they can still clearly recall what happened just now and what they experienced personally. Hayden, you kid, you really have a hand. Lieutenant General Dalmesia heard Hayden's words, and he was happy and walked in the direction of Hayden, while exclaiming loudly. The last time I saw Hayden's ice ability was when he was a kid, and that ice ability can freeze a bathhouse at most. Unexpectedly, in only a few years, this bizarre freezing ability can reach this level. He believes that at least the guy in Kuzan has not reached this level at this time. Advertisement. It's okay. Basic operation. Hayden watched his uncle walk over with a smile, and replied with an indifferent shrug on his face. Blocking just now blocked the group of pirates, but didn't defeat them afterwards, which made Hayden feel a little offensive. When Dalmisha heard this, he was stunned for a second before he shook his head and said, you kid. At this time, there was a navy with the rank of colonel, and walked in from the crowd surrounding Hayden and others. Sir, I am Colonel Jacob at this 353 naval base. Please give instructions. The admiral named Jacob saluted the highest-ranking Lieutenant Admiral Dalmesia in front of him. With his blessed body shape, he had been attacked by pirates that he had never encountered before, and after spending some time on the edge of life and death, he was already covered with big men. The chubby figure seemed to be soaked in a layer of oil, and when he was waiting for the pan, he felt a little trembling with fear. Also because the lieutenant admiral in front of him is also a high-ranking official he has never met. Under the double fear, Jacob's mind was in confusion, waiting mechanically for the commander's instructions. The tall Dalmesia looked down at the person in charge of this base. He seemed to be in a state of panic. Dalmesia didn't care. After all, they just suffered all this, which is understandable. Are you the person in charge of this base? I have received a message from the headquarters before, right? A major general of the headquarters has been transferred to you. Although Dalmesia means questioning, the tone he speaks is not questionable. Yes, Lieutenant General, we have received a message from the headquarters that we know that a major general will be transferred here. Advertisement. Colonel Jacob was like a robot, and immediately answered the question reflexively. Yeah. Dalmesia nodded, then turned his gaze to Hayden next to him and said, this will be your highest officer in the future, Rear Admiral Hayden. He introduced all the marines who belonged to this naval branch who were present on the scene. The Colonel Jacob in front of him immediately froze, and subconsciously held his breath. This. Is this chief their future chief? Why would you be sent to Beihai with this kind of strength? Shouldn't it be on the Great Sea route? Many questions suddenly popped up in his mind. Jacob thought he was the Navy master who saved the owner of their base just now, but he did not expect that he was the commander who was sent to their base. At the same time, Dalmesia's voice was so loud that it could spread to all the space of the dock here, and of course it was clear to the surrounding crowd composed of seamen of this naval branch. Everyone immediately spoke in a volume that they thought the front officer could not hear. Hey, hey, the chief of the Navy will be our commander. Does this mean that no pirates will dare to come to our base in the future? Of course, if there are pirates who dare to come, this adult will definitely freeze them into pirate popsicles. There was a sense of excitement from the whispers of the crowd. After all, knowing that such a powerful officer will lead them in the future naval career, just thinking about it will feel at ease. As for Hayden in the middle of the crowd, he couldn't help but smile as he heard all the words that praised him without losing a word. It's hard for me to do it like this. Hayden shook his head helplessly and muttered. Chapter 109 Heading for Sea Level. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Time flies, a few months later. Beihai 353 Naval Branch. Today is finally the day when this nearly scrapped base will finally be restored as a whole. After being attacked by pirates that day, a fragmented scene, under the materials and building materials that have been shipped in the past few months, has unexpectedly returned to the same light as when it was built at the beginning of the day. 
The intact iron wall was reinforced by one layer more than before, and on the iron wall surrounding the island, black areas appeared at regular intervals, and there were brand new, shining black cannons. The other places on this circular island that were destroyed by shells have also been roughly completed, and only some details are left to be added. Now, Hayden, with his upper body shirtless and showing his eight-pack abs, was in the dojo of the naval facility on the island. He hung upside down from the ceiling on a steel beam supporting the weight of the roof, holding a barbell with the weight of 5T on the left and right in his hand, doing abdominal exercises, and the sweat from his body kept on the floor below. Go up and down. As Hayden was doing daily exercises, he asked a corporal who stubbornly grasped the beam and lay on it with both hands. Where is the ammunition depot? And this corporal who was holding on to the crossbar for fear that he would fall, he was really scared to death. But the job of reporting the situation to the boss was put on his head, and he had to come here to find the boss to report the situation. Ammunition. Ammunition library repaired. The corporal tremblingly reported immediately that he was forcing his eyes not to fall on the wooden floor tens of meters below here. Advertisement. The rest, the rest of the important facilities have also been repaired, and they are basically restored to their original state. The corporal continued to inform the boss in front of him. Whenever the boss hanging upside down in front of him grabs the barbell and pulls up once, his heart will tremble. The boss's daily exercise is really scary. Hey. Drink. After listening to the report from the corporal next to him, Hayden suddenly yanked his body, his upper body almost reaching the height of the beam, and then instantly switched to holding the barbell with one hand and the beam with the other. At this moment Hayden looked up at the corporal lying next to him on the beam, very well, you can withdraw. He made it clear, indicating that the corporal can leave. When the words fell, he took the barbell and fell directly from the beam, making a loud noise and stepping on the solid wooden floor that was made of unknown material. Immediately after putting down the barbell, Hayden walked directly out of the dojo. Dot dot dot. In these few months at the same time. Read more at Hot MTL Novel. Zai, the battle between the pirates and the naval base that took place on the edge of the North Sea's windless zone naturally spread throughout the entire North Sea in the first week. Derma 66, Don Quixote family, etc., this war has entered the eyes of a crowd of dark forces. Soon they began to inquire about specific information through their respective intelligence channels, and it didn't take much time to find out that the naval branch of the North Sea had come to a rear admiral transfer directly from the headquarters. I also heard that he was a strong person, and the same ability as the fellow of the Navy headquarters, Lieutenant Admiral Kuzan. At the beginning, they all began to think about what methods should be used to deal with the new Navy. At the same time, they also thought about why the Navy suddenly sent a Navy here at this time. But after a few months of calming down, the new Navy didn't do anything, and they gradually forgot that there seemed to be such a Navy, and it returned to its former state. Advertisement. Dot dot dot. After coming out of the dojo, Hayden first went back to his room and cleaned his whole body well, then packed all the things he was about to sail. Then he went out and grabbed a seaman and asked him to call Colonel Jacob to the dock to see him. After a while, the only entrance and exit on this small navy island, in the dock, Hayden was neatly dressed up and down, with two Zanpo knives crossed on his back, just to free up the space for the word, justice. He was standing in front of a warship moored in the harbor, carefully inspecting the warship up and down. After all, this is the warship he will take next, even if the boatmen under his crew have thoroughly checked the entire ship, he still wants to see it for himself. Boss, what are you looking for me for? Is there anything you want me to do? Just as Hayden was checking in, Jacob's voice suddenly sounded beside him, his voice a little panting. Hayden immediately stopped checking and turned his gaze to the place where Jacob was standing next to him. Jacob looked a little breathless in his eyes, and some beads of sweat leaked from his forehead. Why are you here? Hayden asked him puzzledly, why are you in such a hurry? Uh, the blessed Jacob was immediately asked by the boss. He thought it was important to call him to the dock, because he ran in such a hurry. But look at the laid-back look of the boss. Advertisement. It's nothing. I just finished sports, boss. Jacob noticed Hayden's expression and spoke nonsense. Boss, did you come to me for something? He immediately changed the subject, and then continued to ask. 
Seeing Jacob seemingly fine, Hayden thought about it in his mind, and then told him, Jacob, I'm going to go out later, just now the base is almost completed. Wait. Jacob heard this and interrupted Hayden hurriedly, Boss, what should we do if you go out? What about this base? He panicked immediately. Although several months have passed, the scene of the pirate attack last time is still vivid. Quote dot dot dot. The base has you. Now that the base has been restored, I believe you can do this task well. The interrupted Hayden was not annoyed, and with a firm look, very optimistic about you, he patted Jacob on the shoulder and said solemnly. Hayden didn't worry about any unexpected situation coming to this island again after he went out. The true background of the previous group of pirates has also been figured out, and it is a pirate group in the Great Root New World. In other words, the last pirate attack was completely an accident, and this naval base would of course not be able to hold on to the New World pirate group. And because of this, Hayden was able to safely hand over the base to Jacob, and then he chose to set sail to patrol the nearby waters. After all, I have been in the fish pond for a few months, and I haven't been out once, how can the points enter his pocket? Hayden thought this way, he was relieved to temporarily hand over the base to Jacob's hands. In this way, under Jacob's tearful gaze, Hayden drove out of the dock and headed for the distant sea horizon with a ship that was just enough to make the warship move. Chapter 110 Encountered an Unnamed Ship Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement a few days later, the warship Hayden was on board, Hayden would not know which sea area he was floating in now. Boss, boss, there is a medium-sized ship with no flags ahead. On a boring afternoon, Hayden, who was watching the novel on the deck of a warship, suddenly heard the situation passed from the watchman above the mast. Hayden didn't think what he was talking about seemed to require attention, but he still spoke, and asked, did you see clearly? How far is the ship from us? He didn't look away from his hand. Books. After waiting for a while, the watchman above seemed to be further confirming what he had just seen the ship that entered his field of vision abruptly. There are no signs or characters on the ship's body, sails, or masts. Even the entire ship seems to be unpainted, retaining the original color of wood when it was first built. According to his rough estimate, the length of this ship without any identification of its identity is estimated to be more than 40 meters. However, the hull does not seem to show any signs of muzzle, on the deck. The watcher who thought about it carefully observed the deck of the ship through the telescope, but soon found that there was nothing unusual on the deck. This is neither a battleship nor a merchant ship or the like. The watcher's instinctive perception of abnormal situations was triggered immediately. Boss, there is no information on that ship, it's not a pirate ship or a merchant ship. The watcher felt that the place of observation was almost done and immediately continued to report the situation to Hayden below. Moreover, the direction of the ship seems to be facing us, and there is no intention to avoid it. He continued. Advertisement. Huh. Hearing this, Hayden felt a little strange. It was neither a pirate ship nor a merchant ship, and there was nothing to indicate his identity. He frowned slightly and realized that something was wrong. He immediately closed the book and put it on a small table aside, stood up and walked towards the bow of the ship. Hayden narrowed his eyes and stared intently. That ship really didn't mean to avoid our warship. In his line of sight at this moment, the ship that seemed to have nothing, although it was not coming in the direction of his warship, it was coming in the direction facing him. Usually, even if the pirate ships are not pirates, ordinary merchant ships will avoid their warships a little bit, or they may send some signal to inform them that they are civilian ships. But the ship in front of. Hayden thought that there was something wrong with this situation, just in case he had better prepare, although it might be unnecessary. Little ones, get me ready for battle. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, standing at the bow of the ship, Hayden stretched his arms and swung backwards, shouting loudly to the marines on the back deck. Immediately afterward, Another hurried voice rang out immediately behind him. You all heard what the boss said. Hurry up and get ready for me. Hurry up. At this time, his deputy, Lieutenant Colonel Brown, behind him, after hearing the boss's words, he carried on without even thinking about it. While shouting with a serious expression, he ran to the cabin to inform others who were not on the deck. Marine. Advertisement. He is a sturdy man, facing a fierce man, 
and Hayden was selected as his deputy for this patrol of the sea. The order was quickly conveyed to the ears of every combatant on the warship, and it didn't take long for the warship that suddenly became noisy, the combatants were fully armed and guarded their positions. Hayden nodded as everyone was ready, then turned and looked back at the sea area in front of the warship at this moment. The nameless ship was also approaching at this time. Hayden even saw the specific outlines of things on the deck of the unknown ship, as well as several people standing on the deck in black clothes who did not know when they appeared. It's okay if you are just an ordinary civilian ship, but if you are a pirate ship, then just give me a big gift, and I can finally start to accumulate points. The expressionless Hayden stared at the unnamed ship that was about to pass by his warship at the moment, thinking in his heart. The seamen on the ship also tightened their heartstrings and stared closely at the ship that was slowly passing by their ship. Since it was the boss who asked them to pay attention, they were afraid that something unexpected would suddenly happen. However, there was really no unusual behavior on the unnamed ship. Although there were only two men in uniform on the deck, they didn't seem to be carrying guns or weapons. Since their ship approached, Hayden's eyes had been fixed on the eyes of the person who seemed to be the head of their ship, and he met him, but he didn't read anything from that look. In the weird and quiet atmosphere, Hayden slowly relaxed his mind, as if there was really nothing strange. Then, the unnamed ship passing by the warship, at this time, its tail has already moved to the same line at the tail of the warship, and the two passed by peacefully. It's actually very short, but it feels long and quiet. At this time, the next one was guarding Hayden's left side of the naval gun, that is, the side that was in contact with the unnamed ship. He hesitated for a while, wondering whether he should tell the boss, but he still blurted out, breaking the silence on the warship at this time. Advertisement. Boss. I seem to smell a bloody smell just now. Huo ran, hearing what the marine soldier told him, the inexplicable feeling in Hayden's heart instantly deepened. As for the seaman who continued to say, Boss, I found that my nose is better than ordinary people's spirit, when I was a child, Hayden has automatically blocked it. However, even if Hayden hadn't heard the seaman behind him explain why he smelled blood, he still believed that his men would never be able to talk about these feelings. As if there was a feeling in the dark that was driving Hayden, Hayden suddenly ordered to stop the ship. You are ready to wait for my signal, and you will fire as soon as the signal arrives. Hayden told all the marines on the deck without any nonsense, and immediately stepped on the moonwalk to catch up with the unnamed ship. Lieutenant Colonel Brown, what signal are we looking at? Yes, Lieutenant Colonel Brown. Because the boss was too eager to say what he meant, the many seamen on the deck at the moment did not understand what the signal the boss just said was, so they had to pass the question to Lieutenant Colonel Brown, who was the biggest official among them and named by the boss. Me. Lieutenant Colonel Brown thought I was just like you. There was an unexpected embarrassment on his slightly ferocious face. As for Hayden on his side, it didn't take long for him to catch up with the unnamed ship that had sailed for a certain distance, and his feet landed firmly on the deck of their ship. Suddenly, wearing uniforms on this ship, all crew members were big men, and they gathered in an instant on the opposite side of where Hayden was standing, staring alertly at the navy in front of him. Chapter 111 I am not such a person, ah. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. A. Let me, let me, let me get out of the way. A sharper voice was then blocked in front of Hayden from this moment, and came from behind the crowd of 20 or 30 people. As the voice drew closer, the crowd was filled with expressionless men in black uniforms, as if they had been touched by something terrifying they immediately changed the expression on their faces and replaced them with a flattering smile. General. Yes yes yes. Without exception, he clutched his heads, and apologized to their respective backs in a low voice. Soon, the owner of this shrill voice walked out of the crowd full of black clothes, especially dazzling. In the eyes of Hayden, who couldn't help frowning at this moment, it was a shorter man in a purple suit. He estimated that this person might be between 1 meter and 6 or 1 meter and 7. The man in the purple suit has a very fat body, a round belly, a greasy face, and a small beard with curving sides under his nostrils. Wearing white gloves on his hands, he kept rubbing his hands back and forth, showing a flattering smile that could see through his heart. What the hell is this man? Hayden couldn't help being surprised by the appearance of this man, and he leaned back slightly. 
Then, I just heard this man say with a smile in his unique sharp voice, Master Navy, is there anything going on in our boat? He rubbed his hands and lowered his head slightly to test his intentions to the Lord Navy in front of him. After all, they didn't seem to be showing anything unusual, right? Looking at the person in front of him, even though his attitude was very toward Hayden's heart, he wouldn't just let this person fool around like this. The uniforms were all men. There was no sign on the ship. His attitude towards himself, and his men finally told him that he smelled blood on the ship. The combination of all these factors made Hayden feel strange, and he had to be more concerned. Advertisement. What is your name? Has your ship been registered with the Navy? What is it for? Hayden looked vigilantly at the decks around him, throwing out his doubts. Even though there were no things he needed to pay special attention to on the surrounding deck, and there was no strange feeling, but Hayden, who was standing on this ship, felt even more inexplicable in his heart. My lord, my name is Wallace. This is one of my merchant ships. We are shipping some accessories to another island to sell. The man named Wallace immediately answered Lord Navy's question, it's all serious business, registered. He continued. Really? Hayden was very suspicious, and asked in a rhetorical question. Then, like his own boat, he pushed away the crowd in front of him, trying to walk into the cabin. Not to mention that you, a little businessman who saw my navy flying over, did not show a trace of fear. Even if you are a serious business person, you will probably wonder if you really did something when you see this posture. Hayden didn't intend to stay longer on this deck. Anyway, there would definitely not be anything wrong on the surface. Hey, my lord, my lord. Wallace's voice immediately rang behind Hayden. He thought what the Navy was going to do, but he didn't expect to enter the cabin. Wallace screamed badly and hurried to catch up with Hayden. My lord, what are you doing? He blurted out immediately. What am I doing? After thinking about it, Hayden casually glanced at Wallace next to him, watching the cold sweat on his forehead, what am I going to do? He asked this person. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, right? Wallace nodded immediately. Navy routine inspection. I want to check whether your cabin is loaded with illegal items. Hayden answered him without even thinking, and then walked down the cabin through the opening on the deck. A. Wallace tried to hold Hayden's arm, but he felt as if he was caught on a steel bar. He couldn't pull it hard, and he fell into the cabin with him. Then, in the instantaneously dimmed environment, Hayden blinked a few times before adapting to the lighting conditions at this time. Advertisement. The sight of the cargo hold under the deck immediately caught his eye. In the messy, damp, and not very accidental cargo hold, under the light of candles on the surrounding bulkheads, the goods piled up on the ground all around, packed in wooden boxes, shone out. A very unpleasant smell of earth and sea permeates the confined space, which is extremely rich. Standing on the ladder in the lower cabin, Hayden couldn't help but looked around the space in the cabin, but he still didn't notice anything abnormal. However, still vigilant, he went down the stairs, stepped over Wallace's body who had fallen to the ground, and walked towards the box pushing place near the light source in front of him at the moment. Let me see what you have installed in it. Hayden muttered to himself as he walked forward. Hey, my lord, wait, wait. At this time, Wallace, who had fallen to pieces, also stood up immediately, feeling that the navy was walking inside, and he didn't care about the big bag that suddenly appeared on top of his head, but don't let this navy go over there. However, looking at the back of the navy in front of him, he was thinking like this. Crack. A sound. Not what Wallace thought. He rushed to the navy and stopped the navy. Instead, Hayden stood in front of the box pusher in the blink of an eye and opened the box in one fell swoop. Under the direct light of the candle on the side bulkhead, he clearly saw what was inside the open box. Inside the wooden box filled with countless dry grass, there are neatly placed pink picture books. Hayden was immediately shocked, speechless, and even the corners of his eyes twitched. And seeing this scene, Wallace, who had not caught up, also froze in place. The atmosphere suddenly fell into an awkward silence. After a while, Hayden slowly turned his head and looked at Wallace, who was sluggish in place at the moment, with an expression like being pierced by the biggest secret expression in his heart. You are so special. Hiding it like this, is hiding this thing. 
His face looked a little bit gritted, so special, it looked like a real thing. Advertisement. Ah, he he he. Wallace, who was stiff in place, looked at the navy as if he had shifted his attention to what he had opened, and suddenly changed his mind. Master Navy, we are all here to make a living. Wallace smiled flatteringly, and walked up as he said, and at the same time took out a pile of bailey from his pocket. He he he, adults, these should be a little secret between us, okay. He smiled and gave Hayden the 10,000 face value bailey in the eyes of Hayden, and handed all the pile he took out to high ascent. Hey, what do you want to do? Hayden hurriedly pushed away, he is not such a person. However, since there is nothing to check up here, although Hayden is a bit disappointed, it is okay for everyone to be in peace. Next time I run into you, you will have to be careful. Hayden warned them casually, and while speaking, he tucked a picture book he picked up into his clothes. Then, just when he was about to walk on the deck and leave the ship. At the corner of Hayden's sight at this moment, he somehow noticed that there seemed to be a gap in the bulkhead behind him, and it seemed that there was still air flowing out of the gap. Hey, is there any place behind you? Hayden felt strange, and stopped to ask Wallace next to him casually. However, Wallace who heard this suddenly stunned again. Bad. In the next second, Wallace rushed to the next box suddenly. Then, die. Navy. A loud shout suddenly exploded in the cargo hold here. This is the voice of the third person in the venue. Chapter 112 Don Quixote Family. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Boom. This unexpected voice followed a terrifying attack and pierced directly at Hayden's chest at this time. He reacted quickly and withdrew his footsteps behind him, and at the same time turned his body to the direction of the attack. In this dimly lit, humid, and relatively closed cargo hold, sudden attacks are even more dangerous. The scene in front of Hayden seemed to have been slowed down. Something broke through the wooden bulkhead and spattered debris, followed by a visible tiny air wave, enveloping the silvery white hidden in the darkness. He didn't see exactly what the thing was coming towards him at the first time, but he didn't panic either, it was just a little accident. Iron. Hayden tensed his muscles in an instant, ready to meet the attack that was about to hit him, and then touched the sleeve Baishui on his back with his right hand. Clang. There was a sound of collision between the blade and the steel. The unexpected silver light hit Hayden's chest of iron and steel at this time, and a small cluster of sparks burst out immediately after making a sound. Swish, although it was a fleeting spark, it instantly brightened the dim picture before Hayden's eyes for a second. Hayden didn't miss the opportunity either, his eyes captured the clear picture before him. It is a giant human being attacking him. Even though he was bent over and attacked himself, his bulging back still touched the ceiling in the cargo hold here, and with his own height of about 1.8 meters, he estimated that his height might not be so. Half the height of the cargo hold space. Advertisement. It is also conceivable that the size of this unexpected enemy is far from Hayden. Feeling the body strengthened by iron, Hayden still felt the tremendous power from this attack this was not the power that ordinary pirates would have. I, where did this guy come from? Hayden was too late to think about the others. Fighting in this closed and dim environment is a very unfavorable combat environment for him. Although there may be some delusions, this environment may be a favorable situation for the attacker. Hayden considered all the possibilities so quickly, he didn't plan to fight him here again. When Hayden took advantage of the attacker's next attack, he slammed his feet on the ground and instantly activated like a spring. The top of his head smashed through the upper deck and rushed out of the cargo hold with a bang. Let's play in a different place at dawn. Hayden, who saw the light immediately, adapted to the change of light to his eyes in a second of the crisis. At this moment, he has pulled out the sleeve of Shirayuki on his back, posing with a knife and facing the big hole he just broke from the deck just now, with a vigilant expression. After all, the first hand that made him instantly understand that this attacked him was definitely not an offensive guy, but he still had another thought in his heart. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi Are these pirates in the North Sea so fierce? How can it be worse than the pirates I met on the Great Sea Route before? Hayden couldn't understand. In the same way, Hayden's momentum just now naturally aroused the reaction of many big men in uniform on the deck. The big guys looked at the situation of the navy in front of them, without even thinking about it, 
Something must have gone wrong, and it seemed that they couldn't just be confused. They all did not know where they took out their weapons, spears, or swords, staring at Hayden fiercely, but strangely, they did not move. But since the people hiding on this ship attacked him wearing a navy uniform, it means that they have now become enemies. Advertisement. If they were all enemies, Hayden would of course kill them, but the guy under the cabin was more important now, so he didn't bother to aim the weapon at himself and surround him. Navy. At this time, the voice dragging the old long voice came from the location of the hole that was broken. Immediately afterwards, there was a crash, and the guy who appeared huge under the fuzzy silhouette also jumped up from the cargo hold and stood on the deck with a thud. When Hayden saw how old this man really was, his pupils shrank suddenly. This guy is too tall. It was so tall that it even gave him the feeling, just like Teacher Zephyr, Lieutenant Admiral Karp, and the tall Navy leaders. Although the aura of this person is impossible to compare with those, there is still an inexplicable feeling surrounding this person. Hayden looked at this person's overall appearance again, but suddenly he felt as if he had seen this person. He couldn't help frowning, but he didn't want to ask the question, but murmured, You guy, do you know what will happen after attacking the Navy? While speaking, Hayden kept staring at his eyes tightly, and found that there seemed to be a slight smile and viciousness in his eyes. Navy, Navy, I didn't want to do so much. You just go there and don't board this ship, hey. Just listen to this man sighing and shaking his head slowly, pitying the Navy who was alone on their ship in front of him. However, Hayden didn't expect this person to answer this, but he didn't care what this person answered. Are you sure this is the last thing you want to say? Hayden asked, and he was ready to make a move. Where is your name? He raised his brow and was a little curious. Name. The man who was different in height in front of Hayden murmured, that's right, let you know who killed you before you die. This man seemed to be talking to himself, but he used everyone. The audible volume was spoken. Very good. The man suddenly spread his arms. Advertisement. He was wearing two layers of clothing. The inner layer was a black windbreaker, revealing his bare chest indifferently, the outer layer was a big red cloak with fluffy edges. He wore a pirate captain style hat on his head, a pair of sunglasses on his face, and an extremely arrogant smile on his mouth that had not changed since the beginning. My uncle's name is Diamante, the highest cadre of the Don Quixote family. The keyword, Don Quixote, instantly hit Hayden's memory, and he suddenly became cheerful, recalling this vague memory. The man in front of him is Doflamingo in the original book, the highest cadre in his family, Diamante. Seems to be a person who ate the banner of flying fruits. Hayden can only recall to this extent, no amount of information is left. Immediately, Hayden thought again, what this guy is doing here, shouldn't he be with that flamingo, it seems they don't have the habit of acting separately at this time. At the same time, he immediately raised his vigilance to the maximum. The strength of this person is definitely not comparable to the pirates he has encountered before. The highest cadre of the Doflamingo family, even if they go to the great root with their current strength, they will soon be able to get up. The reason why they are still staying in the North Sea is not because of insufficient strength. But, this is also just right. Hayden suddenly became excited when he thought of this. So, in Diamante's eyes, he thought that the Navy would be shocked to hear the name of their Don Quixote family. But unexpectedly, the Navy even smiled on his face. Chapter 113 Are you sure you want my knife? Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. The Don Quixote family is a group of pirates headed by Don Quixote da Flamingo. The current top cadres are four, and the main cadres currently have five or six. As for them, they have more subordinates. In this sea area of the North Sea, no one knows that no one knows, and those who see it are afraid to avoid it. Even the Navy in the North Sea is the same. Although they all have the mission of punishing evil, they still hope that they will never run into the Don Quixote family. Dot dot dot. Navy. What are you laughing at? Diamante asked immediately. He looked at the Navy who came alone and was now alone on their ship, and after hearing that he had declared his name, not only did he not show a look of fear, but seemed to be excited. This strange Navy really made Diamante a little curious. Anyway, he has been exposed and can't be fooled. Just look at what the Navy is going to do next. But, 
The sword in his hand seems a bit interesting. Diamante didn't care what Hayden, who was wearing a navy uniform, could do. His attention had been placed on the sword held by the navy in front of him at this moment. The slender blade shone with a chill that seemed to sting his eyes. Diamante, he has never seen a sword like this before. As a pirate, he likes the benefits of being a pirate very much, that is, when he sees something he likes, he just goes to take it away, no matter if the thing belongs to someone else or he shouldn't touch it. Whatever you see, you can snatch it away, this is their pirate. The period that Diamante thought to his heart seemed to have passed for a long time, but it was only a moment. Immediately afterwards, Hayden looked at Diamante, who was holding a western sword in front of him, and he slowly said with a smile, Hey, what is your bounty? As he said, he couldn't help holding his hand tightly. The hilt of Shirayuki's hilt. Advertisement. Diamante was immediately taken aback by his unanswered question. After a while, it seems that your navy is really incompetent. He also shook his head to Hayden, the North Sea Navy. The work to be done expresses disappointment. It seemed that this navy really didn't understand anything, and that was the reaction he heard after he reported his name. Diamante lost his interest immediately and didn't want to continue playing. The big men in black who surrounded Hayden were also stopped by the Navy's question, and couldn't help but burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. Boss Diamante, isn't this Navy always messing around? Just kill the Navy. They didn't expect that this Navy wearing a coat of justice really didn't know who their boss was. This is too interesting. The atmosphere surrounding him instantly noisy but it did not disturb Hayden's mind at this time, as if he and Diamante in front of him were the only ones left in the field at this moment. But in Hayden's perspective, staring at Diamante, from his own perspective, he looked at Diamante at this time as if he was looking at the redemption points of the event. The frowned brow was just thinking about how many points Diamante could offer him. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, as for the emotion of fear, the subordinates of a villain in the original work will not cause Hayden to panic. It's just a matter of choosing when to take action. This is a cautious choice. Then, when Hayden didn't respond, Diamante continued to speak. Navy, you are lucky today. If you give me the knife in your hand and the knife in your back, then you can go. Diamante gave the Navy in front of him a way to survive, and he continued, hand it over, and you can survive. When the words were over, he pointed the western sword in his hand and pointed the tip of the sword in Hayden's direction. Quote dot 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 question mark quote. Advertisement. Hayden hasn't thought about doing anything yet, you guy wants my zanpaku. This is a sentence he hasn't heard for a long time. As for the person who said this to Hayden, he has long been honored in the corpse soul world. Are you sure you want my two knives? Hayden calmed down in an instant, he asked Diamante in a flat tone and at the same time began to circulate the spiritual pressure all over his body, and gradually flowed over to Shirayuki's sword. Well, if you hand it over, I will let you go. Diamante responded immediately. Okay then. After being silent, Hayden seemed to agree to his proposal, and Diamante immediately became happy. He didn't expect that in a daily mission, it seemed that he had obtained two good swords. The happy Diamante, his smile exaggerated, spread out his left hand without holding a sword, waiting for the navy to pass his two swords to his palm. However, Ling Wu, Shu Bai Shui. No extra action, no extra nonsense. Hayden chanted the answer of Zan Po Dao in a soft voice, and began to untie the sleeve Bai Shui in his hand. For any guy who wants to take his Zanpaku from his hands, Hayden will not show any mercy, let alone hesitate. In an instant, the pure white spiritual pressure that erupted from Hayden directly rushed to the height of the ship's mast. The ensuing icy breath instantly smeared all the space on the deck of this ship, and everyone present immediately felt the cold breath of the navy body in their eyes at this moment. The breath they exhaled immediately became visible to the naked eye, turning into a cloud of white mist. In the environment where the temperature dropped sharply, they couldn't help using their mouths and noses together and panting for breath. What? Advertisement. Diamante was taken aback by the amazing aura he felt. When did the North Sea Navy have this level of strength? This guy is definitely not comparable to the Navy you have encountered before. Diamante immediately confirmed the inference in his mind. At the same time, on Hayden's warship. Lieutenant Colonel Brown, 
Look at that ship. That's the boss's movement, right? Is this a signal from the boss? In the sea not far away from the unknown ship where Hayden was standing at this time, Hayden's own warship stopped here. Hayden didn't let them follow in the warship because he was afraid of accidents, and he couldn't take care of the safety of the rest of the seamen. Anyway, he left alone if he wanted to, and hid as he wanted. Standing at the bow of the ship, looking at the ship boarded by the boss, the momentum that rushed up just now was the boss's movement. The boss showed them to them before, and they knew it. But what the boss's signal means? Although Lieutenant Colonel Brown struggled with this for a second, he immediately gave the command to fire. Immediately afterwards, call out, call out, call out. A round of cannonballs fired from the warship went high into the sky, wrapped in shocking power, and directed straight at the unnamed ship. At the same time, the warship was slowly starting and heading towards that ship. I have to hurry up to support the boss. Chapter 114 Diamante. Next chapter. Advertisement. Dozens of shells flew in the air for a few seconds, and soon reached the attacking ship. Call out. Call out. Call out. This is a terrible sound. This is a roar. This is a howling that sweeps and pierces the air. The shells immediately hit the ship, the unnamed ship Hayden boarded, the ship of Diamante, the highest cadre of the Don Quixote family. The shell is coming. Turn the rudder fast. Turn the rudder fast. Cannon attack. Cannon attack. Although the big guys who were affected by the sudden drop in temperature that affected their physical sensations and shocked their hearts, they responded quickly to the familiar sound of a shell attack. At this moment, they ignored the navy surrounding the upper deck of the ship and hurriedly responded to the incoming artillery shells. After all, the navy still has their boss there to deal with, but if they don't try to figure out how to deal with the incoming shells and damage the ship under their feet, then it would be really bad. Boom. Boom. Shells fired from a warship on the surface of the sea not far away plunged into the sea around the ship. Blasted into the sky, the huge explosive force shook the unnamed ship, which is not too big, and the hull immediately became swaying. However, at this moment, on the deck where Hayden and Diamante were facing each other, the water splashing above their heads seemed to be frozen instantly, and a white mist enveloped the entire space. There was not a single drop of water and it dripped on Hayden's body, including Diamante. This guy, Diamante's keen sense also immediately realized this, although he still had the original arrogant smile on the surface, but at this time he began to think in his heart. Advertisement. What is the origin of this navy? Is this freezing ability natural? Or is there something else? Shouldn't the guy with this kind of strength have never heard of it? This kind of ability can affect the surrounding environment without making any moves. Diamante knew nothing about the navy in front of him. On the deck that was constantly shaking due to shelling, Hayden's body did not shake at all. However, because of the shelling, his attack was temporarily interrupted. Hayden turned his head slightly, feeling the direction of the shelling. After paying attention for a few seconds, he frowned immediately, a little speechless. Why didn't those silly groups hit a single shot? In this short period of time, two rounds of shelling have actually come over. But in Hayden's feeling, the ship hadn't been shelled once, and all of their shells hit the sea. Hayden's face suddenly seemed a little difficult to look at. It seems that when I go back, I have to teach those silly people. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. At this time, Diamante, who was opposite, also noticed the Navy's face in front of him. It seems that your group of seamen is really useless. Diamante stared at Hayden with a sneer. Diamante also knew that their shells had never hit the ship once, and he knew in his mind why the navy in front of him showed such an expression. Huh. Hayden looked at Diamante's mocking words, and he didn't take it to heart. Anyway, he would be a dead person, so it doesn't hurt to let him say a few more words now. But he didn't plan to wait any longer, since he didn't make a move, then I would make a move. At once, Hayden stomped on the deck and a circular microwave erupted under his feet. His body immediately started, and he rushed towards Diamante with a knife. Diamante naturally didn't stand stupidly on the spot, and of course he didn't want to avoid the navy's attack. He took the western sword in his hand and greeted Hayden who was coming straight forward. Advertisement. In this first move, the idea of both parties is to try the opponent's strength first, and then adjust the next action in an instant. In an instant. 
Hayden's white-sleeved snow-white blade collided with the western-style blade in Diamante's hand. Dang! Made a sound. The two imposing auras also collided at one point. One is practicing swordsmanship for at least a dozen years, and the other is an ice blade blessed by the icy breath. However, it can be said that a very large part of the swordsman is the strength of the user, arm strength, wrist strength, foot strength. If both sides of the war are swordsmen, then the side with the superior power will naturally have the overall superiority. Among the two of Hayden and Diamante, Diamante is much stronger than Hayden. I rely on. At this moment, Hayden had to do his best to block Shishui and prevent Diamante's sword from falling to his side. The two sides reached a stalemate the first time they met. As soon as Diamante slashed the navy knife on his body, he noticed that the strength of the navy didn't look as great as the movement he made. And Hayden didn't expect his strength to lose to this Diamante. Navy, you let go now and I can give you a chance. Diamante looked down at this and he was less than his height, the navy gritted his teeth and said easily. Raising his head, Hayden gave Diamante a fierce look. Not only did he dislike the feeling of losing, he didn't like to look up at people. But he didn't tell what he was thinking, but silently responded with his own actions. Then Hayden pushed Shu Baishui hard, and Diamante was also slightly leaned back by the unexpected force, but it didn't matter. Advertisement. The confronting swords separated immediately. Hayden took a few steps backwards and stretched a few distances. Then he raised his free left hand and pointed his index finger to the left chest of Diamante's heart in front of him. Bow Dao no si by lay. The link si condensed at Hayden's fingertips penetrated in an instant. It instantly turned into a thin thunder pillar shining with dazzling blue light with a sizzling noise, like an electromagnetic cannon, tracing a trajectory and blasting towards Diamante. What? This unexpected attack method immediately surprised Diamante, and then instinctively avoided the attack aimed at his heart. However, the distance between Diamante and Hayden at this time is not far. The unexpected situation coupled with Bailey's unique attack speed. Even though Diamante reacted instantly, trying to avoid the attack, Bailey still hit his body. The thin thunder pillar directly pierced his left shoulder and penetrated directly through his left shoulder. What? Diamante was instantly transferred to the brain by the huge pain on his left shoulder, and subconsciously covered the wound with his hand. The entire left arm was immediately paralyzed in Diamante's consciousness, unable to perceive the existence of his left hand. Also, the covered wound did not shed blood like a normal wound. Diamante naturally felt very abnormal when he was in horror, and he moved his blocked palm to check the wound. Then, in his eyes, a hole the size of an egg appeared on his left shoulder, and the edge of the wound was instantly scorched by lightning. He also seemed to smell the scent of roasted meat on his body. At this moment, Hayden's faint voice suddenly sounded, slowly drifting into Diamante's ears. Well, I didn't expect you to be able to avoid the vital parts. 39%. Chapter 115 Slightly Better. Previous Chapter. Next Chapter. Advertisement. You you. When did Diamante suffer such humiliation, he couldn't say a complete sentence when he was emotional at this time, shaking all over, staring at Hayden with a ferocious face. He wouldn't care about the wound he was hit, nor the pain that had been transmitted to the brain from the wound, even he could see the scene behind him from the hollow on his left shoulder. A navy could hurt him to such an extent, how dare he injure him to such an extent. In Diamante's heart suddenly angry at this time, he had no intention of wanting to spare this navy's life. Not only the navy in front of him, but also all the navies on his warship. Regardless of men, women, young or old, old or weak, sick or disabled, as long as it is everyone on that warship it doesn't matter if you kill them all. Sword Long Sword. Diamante suddenly took action, aiming the western sword at the navy in front, and activated his own ability to fly fruits. The sword body of the western sword suddenly became something completely different from the steel sword body under the action of the devil fruit, and the sword body was stretched and stretched as if it were elastic. Locking. Then under Diamante's control, the soft blade immediately fixed back to the hardness that the blade should have, and turned back to a sharp blade. But these operations are completed in the blink of an eye. The point of Diamante's sword slammed into Hayden's chest. Fortunately, Hayden's reaction speed was faster than his attack speed. 
He put the blade of Shu Shirayuki across his chest, blocking Diamandi's thrust. But Hayden was also suddenly pushed back by this huge force, and slammed into the cabin on the upper deck of the rear deck like he was flying upside down. Then, with a swish, Diamante retracted the extended sword in his hand. Diamante didn't feel the point of the sword piercing into the flesh just now, so he didn't relax his vigilance, his eyes were fixed on a big hole punched in the cabin by his own attack. In my sight, the scene inside the big cave was covered by the smoke and dust that was excited, so I couldn't see the specific situation inside. Similarly, Diamante didn't want to attack by himself. If you fight against the navy inside, it is likely that the ship will not be able to withstand the aftermath of the two of them fighting. Advertisement. As a devil fruit capable person, it would be a very terrible thing if the ship carrying him on the sea was destroyed. Cough cough cough. Hayden collapsed in a large piece of debris, coughing twice as he inhaled the dust. Then Shirayuki used his sleeve to sweep away the smoke blocking the line of sight, and after shaking his head, he stood up. The attack just now was completely offset by Shu Shirayuki, and he did not receive too much impact or damage. However, he did not expect that the attack just now would be so strong. In the next second, Hayden felt Diamante's spiritual pressure in his mind, and found that he was still standing in place, motionless. But in this sea, it seems that he has nowhere to go. It's better to stand still. Hayden, who was thinking like this in his heart, immediately swung two flying slashes. The astonishing sword energy engulfed in the ice-cold breath instantly appeared in Diamante's eyes at this time, and the sword energy that shot out from the gap in the cabin was straight towards him. However, Diamante was even more surprised at this time. He is also a swordsman, he knows exactly to what extent a swordsman can cut out flying and slashing. Although he was able to slash out flying slashes himself, he did not expect that the navy, which looked very young, would also be able to slash out. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, Diamante, he thought the navy hadn't reached this level yet. Moreover, under his temptation just now, the freezing ability of the navy was probably not a natural element. He didn't have the domineering attack just now, and the navy subconsciously used the sword in his hand to resist it. Finally, there is the trick he just hit himself. Diamante glanced at the wound on his left shoulder subconsciously. He really couldn't understand what the navy was all about. His ability was too strange. Immediately afterwards, despite his doubts, Diamante resorted to defensive tactics. Cloak. Diamante immediately put the big cloak behind him in front of him. Advertisement. Locking. After speaking, he held up the soft cloak in front of him in his hand, and then it hardened into steel-like hardness, and even seemed to glow with steel-like luster. At this time, two sword auras hit the cloak. Diamante's feet were immediately greeted by a huge force on the cloak at the moment, and he couldn't resist taking two steps back. At the same time, the two sword chi that came one after another crashed into Diamante's hard cloak, and a thick white mist was also agitated. Diamante, who was hiding behind the cloak, felt the icy breath that was constantly blowing in front of him at this time. The body temperature that had dropped just now also dropped even lower. Even with his physical fitness, he couldn't help trembling slightly at this time, and breathed out the mist visible to the naked eye from his nostrils. Suddenly, the force that hit him on the cloak dissipated. Diamante then slammed his cloak, pulling away the white mist covering his sight. Immediately after, the figure of Hayden suddenly appeared in front of his eyes. Although from the beginning to the present, it seemed that he was a little weaker, but Diamante never had a trace of fear in his heart. Navy. Diamante looked at Hayden, who was facing him. He didn't have any idea to avoid him, and then he rushed straight towards him. Sword Snake Sword. Suddenly, the western sword in Diamante's hand changed shape again. At this time, under his control, the blade of the western sword seemed to be alive, curved and flexible. It seems that the sharp blade has changed into a form that does not hurt at all, but in fact, there is always a dazzling sword light on the tip of the sword, telling others that it is still sharp. Afterwards, Diamante slammed the western sword in his hand, and the western sword immediately reacted and began to swing irregularly, making Hayden unable to predict the direction of the attack. But Hayden didn't think so much, what good was all these bells and whistles all day long? Huh. After a quiet, slight noise, Hayden, who rushed towards Diamante, 
disappeared out of thin air in Diamandi's sight. Advertisement. Diamandi never blinked his eyes, and he didn't even look away from Hayden when he was about to come head on with Hayden. However, Hayden's figure disappeared out of thin air when he didn't realize it, it seemed that his eyes didn't even react. Just as Diamandi was stunned, Hayden's figure returned to his sight. He just appeared. It was already stuck in front of him, squatting in the air, and the position of the blade in his hand was exactly at the height of his neck. Under the effect of inertia, Diamandi wanted to stop the momentum of the sprint, but his feet slammed on the deck but only played a small role. At this moment, Diamandi sensed the call of death to him. Under this huge deterrence, he exhausted everything. Squat down, armed, locked, hardened, western sword. Diamante used all the means he could use at this moment. Several layers of defense were attached to the entire upper body area in an instant, but Hayden did not waver at all at this time. He firmly believed that his sword was a sword that could cut everything. Click. Shirayuki's pure white blade touched the real thing. First, the western sword that was cut open, and then the steel cloak that was cut open, and then only the flesh wrapped in Diamante's armor color remained. But also because of Diamante's immediate squat, Shushirayuki didn't cut his neck, but instead hit his chin. The offset blade cut into his chin fiercely, and only a little bit was left to cut off his chin completely. However, Diamante reacted from the attack at this time. He severely slashed the navy in front of him with the severed western sword. Perceiving the attack, Hayden could only give up this attack, and instantly stepped his feet on Diamante's body, and a rebound withdrew. Then, the atmosphere on the deck fell into silence. Chapter 116 Snake Sword Space Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement in this sea area that was constantly bombarded by artillery, at this time the two ships that Hayden and Diamante were based on were constantly shaken by the aftermath of the explosion and could not be stabilized. Except for the front deck of the ship where Hayden and Diamante stood, the rest of the ship had already been shrouded in tension. Diamante's men must deal with the attack from Hayden's marines. They not only have to control the ship to avoid the shelling, but also have to fight back. Everyone on the ship moved, and no one dared to be lazy in this crisis. At this time, the atmosphere fell into silence on the front deck of the ship. Hayden, who succeeded in one blow, didn't want to take advantage of the situation and continue to attack. Presumably from Diamante's move to force him back, it seemed that he almost cut his jaw directly, but it didn't cause much harm to him. This kind of wounded enemy is sometimes the most dangerous. The scrupulous Hayden planned to observe Diamante before attacking further. As for Diamante, he is now. Diamante immediately lost his facial sensation, from under the nose to the chin. The left hand subconsciously covered the cut part, but the palm of his hand immediately seemed to be burned by flames, and it bounced out instantly. Immediately afterwards, he lowered his head in the line of sight where his chin should have been invisible, but noticed that something like a block of ice fell from him to the floor. With a slap, it fell to the deck and became ice slag. What is that? Why can't I feel my mouth? Diamante's mind suddenly fell into a trance, and then the memory of the attack just now seemed to be playing a movie, and it played in his mind at twice the speed. Huo ran. He understood what happened after he was hit just now. Diamante's face suddenly turned ugly. Advertisement. He actually, he had his chin cut off by this navy sword. Diamante's eyes suddenly glared at Hayden not far in front of him, and the visible anger slowly rose in his eyes. The more he thought about it, the more angry he became, and his undulating chest gradually increased the amplitude of the undulations. Well, Diamante suddenly yelled at Hayden, the condition of his chin made him speechless, so he could only shout vaguely from his mouth. He has never been as angry as the situation at the moment. Immediately, his whole body exploded with a strong aura. In an instant, he covered only half of the western sword in his hand with the domineering armed color, and a dazzling black light flashed on the western sword. Diamante completely ignored the wound on his body. Even if he was buried in this sea area today, he would cut the navy in front of him into 10,000 pieces. E.M.M. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi Hayden didn't understand what Diamante was calling at this time. But looking at Diamante's situation, he also knew that Diamante had lost his mind and turned into a beast driven purely by anger. 
commonly known as go anxious jumping over the wall. It seems a bit wrong to use this to describe. At this moment, Hayden was still not in the slightest panic, he even wanted to laugh a little in his heart. From the time he and Diamante met to the present, no other cadres of the Doflamingo family have come out to help in these hours, which shows that he is acting alone this time. Coupled with the test of his strength just now, although his own strength is not dominant, but from the speed test just now, his speed is obviously faster than him, and he can still stand in the air with his spirit. Advertisement. Then he is a devil fruit capable person on the sea, as long as he goes up into the air and launches a long range attack to blast the ship off, then he has no place to run, and when he falls into the sea, he can only be killed. Hayden, who had figured it out all of a sudden, had no worries at once. But he still wanted to play with him again, after all, he hadn't moved his skills for a few months, and his bones started to stiffen a little. But his domineering seems to have something. Hayden stared at the western sword in Diamante's hand that had been blacked out, and became interested. Speaking of the domineering thing, is it possible to start practicing? Just as Hayden was thinking about these things leisurely, Diamante rushed to Hayden suddenly, shouting at the same time with unknown meaning. Hash. At. Hash, don't look around. Although his reaction was a little slow, Hayden quickly blocked Shu Baishui in front of him to catch the attack. Then his body was pushed back violently by this force. Hayden tried his best to compete with him again. But, both sides were working hard, and the collision of the swords was rubbed with sparks, Hayden could only raise his head to stare at Diamante's eyes, and then was pushed back by his strength in a daze. Diamante looked down at the navy's expression of gritted teeth trying to block his attack, and his mood suddenly got a little joy. You are only at this level. I rely on. Hayden saw that he was about to be unable to carry it anymore. He didn't want to compete with Diamante anymore, anyway, there were other aspects that could beat him. Then he slashed and smashed Diamante in front of him. Advertisement Diamante, who was suddenly bounced off, didn't want to give the navy in front of him any chance to breathe, and the western sword in his hand immediately turned into a long snake from a sword blade. Clang. 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 Just a short second or two. The snake in Diamante's hand had already stabbed five or six attacks, each of which was stabbed from a different angle, which made Hayden unable to figure out where the attack came from. He could only rely on his own dominant movement speed to change positions on the deck swiftly. Every time the figure disappeared, the bright black long snake pierced into the deck where Hayden was standing for a second, and then blasted a big hole. For a while, it seemed that this space was full of scenes from the long snake in Diamante's hands twisting and twisting, and it seemed that it hadn't been broken. Diamante stood in place and controlled the snake, so that Hayden couldn't get close to him, and his attack also prevented Hayden from using his own tricks and could only passively defend. You are still excited. After dozens of dodges, Hayden quickly became tired of dodges. Then, while continuing to avoid Diamante's stretched blade, he focused part of his attention on Na Diamante and began to observe the situation around him, trying to find the gap. Hayden's eyes immediately stared, observing Diamante's whole body not far in front of him. Not only the situation around him, but also the situation in this space from him to himself is also included. Because during this period of time, the blades that seemed to extend from Diamante's western swords filled the space where Diamante and Diamante were. Move, it is likely to be cut by the sword. Hayden's brain moved quickly. He tried to analyze and grasp, from where he is now to where Diamante stood, the gap between the two that may appear in only one second. Hayden didn't want to consume it anymore, he wanted to kill with one blow. Chapter 117 Unexpected Change Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement however, at this same moment, waiting patiently for the opportunity to prepare for a one-shot kill, Hayden noticed something appeared on the left from the corner of his eye. He paused to observe the situation around Diamante then turned and glanced at the sea on the left side of the ship. Then what came into Hayden's eyes was the group of marines under him, driving the warship leaning towards him. Seeing how they were driving this warship, he immediately understood their silly thoughts, they definitely wanted to bring the warship over and board the ship's deck for a battle. Ma and Egg. Hayden suddenly had a headache, and he actually forgot to tell them not to support him like this in case of a fight. But in this situation, Hayden didn't have time to give them a signal. 
Then, regardless of whether the group of guys wanted to support the idea, he continued to focus all his attention on Diamandi's attack. At the same time, facing the Navy's sudden distraction, even though Diamandi hadn't noticed the surrounding waters yet, even if he knew it, he wouldn't care. Hayden's distracted behavior naturally did not escape Diamandi, who was staring at him all the time. Not to mention that he was already in a state of furious anger, at this time, he would never let go of any subtle movement of the navy in front of him. Good chance. Diamante, who suddenly thought of it in his heart, quickly retracted the snake sword, and then without any pause or hesitation, he raised the western sword in his hand and swung his out of body sword energy. At hash percent, half a month. Funeral. Then. From his western sword, which was only half left, a terrifying, green lighted isolated slash suddenly appeared. The strong wave of sword chi aroused, as if cutting tofu, easily split the deck beneath his feet in two, and blasted it straight in the direction of Hayden. Advertisement at this moment, the warship was attached to the ship under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Brown. Hayden saw such an astonishing sword aura coming towards him in a blink of an eye. Of course he didn't want to be able to do it. From the aura of this sword, he could judge that the power of this slash was definitely extraordinary. His feet slammed on the deck, and he dodges to avoid the direction of the attack of sword energy. Then, Diamante's half-moon funeral rushed straight into the cabin on the deck, and directly cut a one-meter-wide gap in the cabin, revealing the scene in the cabin. Fortunately, Diamante didn't forget the important things of his original trip in his anger, controlled the power of sword energy, and did not cause too serious damage to the ship. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Brown led the combat marines aboard the ship in swarms. Every sea soldier was roaring and gathered into a huge momentum. And Diamante's group of black-clothed men, naturally, weren't playing on this boat. As a member of the Doflamingo family, they were also ruthless pirates. Afterwards, the large number of two sides collided together, either holding swords, or using only their own fists and feet. In the eyes of Hayden, who was squatting on the mast at this moment, the two men and horses were like a stream of blue and white water mixed with black water and they couldn't tell who was who. This 40-meter-long cargo ship instantly turned into a bloody and chaotic battlefield. In the chaotic crowd below, Diamante, who was much taller than the others, seemed to have great power in the western sword in his hand, killing one seaman with one move, and another one. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. Then, after only five or six seconds, Hayden noticed the incident. In addition, coupled with the first wave of collisions between the two sides, his seamen seemed to be missing a lot, and they were immediately suppressed by the pirates. Seeing this Hayden frowned immediately, feeling anxious. He didn't expect that he would choose the best seamen from that base, and when he encountered this group of pirates, he would not last long. Trouble, after spitting out two words, Hayden immediately fell, he wouldn't let this group of pirates kill all his marines just like that. Brown. Advertisement after falling. Hayden cut off the two big men who tried to attack him, and then shouted in the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Brown. Boss. When Lieutenant Colonel Brown heard the boss's voice, he answered Hayden after killing a pirate. You take the remaining people back to the warship. Hayden slashed all the way in Brown's direction, yelling at the same time. At the same time, the battle on the ship did not stop. Within a few words of Hayden and Brown, the number of seamen quickly decreased. Yes, boss. Lieutenant Colonel Brown looked at Hayden, who was already next to him, nodded fiercely, and couldn't help but wipe the blood that blocked his forehead with his sleeve. Retreat. Retreat. Lieutenant Colonel Brown shouted loudly, trying to pass it to the standing seamen in this chaotic and noisy environment. Immediately afterwards, the sea soldiers who were still able to move began to withdraw towards the boarding position, and Hayden kept covering them. Under the cover of Hayden, the seamen quickly withdrew back to the warship on the way to board the ship. However, when things reached this point, there was another accident. Navy. A shout suddenly erupted in the chaotic scene. The sound was like a rest symbol, which instantly stopped everyone in the arena from moving. Hayden naturally caught this movement, but he felt a little strange, whose voice, and how the direction of that voice came from the direction of the warship. Then he swept in the direction of the warship with ray pressure, and then he noticed a ray pressure that surprised him appeared on the warship. Diamante. Hayden slowly spit out these four words between his gritted teeth. 
Advertisement now that Diamante appeared on his warship, the seaman who had just retreated back. Damn it! Hayden cursed secretly and quickly jumped onto his warship. Then Diamante and one of his men appeared in his eyes, only two of them were standing on the deck of the warship. Diamante used his ability to directly turn a deck into a soft cloth silk and wrapped all the retreating navy in it. Faced with this situation, Hayden did not dare to act rashly. As long as Diamante is now disarmed, the seaman inside will be crushed. Boss, boss, sorry, we haven't played, what? Diamante listened to these navy noises and directly wrapped tightly around their deck. You guy. Seeing the pain of his subordinates, Hayden's face went dark for a moment. Diamante looked at the navy and did not speak, he also seemed to be speechless, and he gestured to the men next to him. His men then said, if you stop like this, our boss can still let go of your navy. Heard this. Not only was the restrained seaman silent, Hayden also remained silent. Chapter 118 Despicable Routine Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement, Diamante. Seeing the scene in front of him, the silent Hayden slowly spit out Diamante's name from his mouth, his tone slightly low. He stared intently at the seamen who were wrapped in a thick deck in front of him. Although he had only known them for a few months, he was not very familiar with them. However, in the shout of, Boss, Hayden has long been accustomed to having such a group of soldiers, not to mention that the leader of this group of soldiers is himself. Diamante, are you sure this is what you are going to do next? At this time, the expressionless Hayden stared at Diamante coldly, and asked him slowly. At the same time, the spiritual pressure under his body began to become restless, as if he couldn't help being trapped in Hayden's body, and he was ready to invade the surrounding space. At this moment, Hayden's Riatsu was completely different from the situation in the previous battle. Just now, the spiritual pressure that flows between one move and the other is basically the same as the general aura, but now. Although Diamante now has this group of marines as hostages under his control, he can threaten Hayden from taking any action in front of him. But in Diamante's feeling at this moment, he seemed to perceive the navy in front of him, and his aura seemed to have undergone a subtle change inadvertently. If the feeling Hayden gave Diamante before was pure coldness, then the feeling he gave him now was an indescribable feeling. In Diamante's eyes, he could see with his naked eyes what seemed to be around the navy at this moment, entwined with a certain kind of energy. This navy is so weird. Advertisement Diamante, he didn't dare to relax a bit, and even concentrated his mind as much as possible. His instinct told him that he must not let down a little bit of vigilance for this navy. Immediately, he waved to the men next to him. The subordinate who stood next to him as his microphone at the moment understood immediately and said, yes, that's right. At this point he stopped and looked up into Diamante's eyes. Diamante motioned for him to continue without hesitation. You stay on this deck and don't move. When we leave, we will let the seaman go. The messenger quickly finished speaking, and he said something almost whimsical. After speaking, the scene fell into silence for a second. Then, a group of marines controlled by Diamante, they screamed first. Boss! Leave us alone! Kill this pirate! Boss! Help! Boss! I don't want to die yet! Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. The marines immediately began to speak their own words, but without exception, facing the situation at the moment, they all told their true inner thoughts. Some seamen want to kill the pirates regardless of their lives, and some seamen are so scared by fear that they become ordinary people. Looking at the seamen in front of them, they were imprisoned in Diamante's ability to bend the deck, and now as long as Diamante moved his fingers, all of them would be crushed to pieces. He didn't dare to push Diamante a little bit, and now the lives of all marines can be said to be truly in his palm. Similarly, he was not sure that he could kill Diamante instantly in this situation. Hayden didn't know how to respond to their hope, and could only answer with silence. Diamante listened to the group of marines he held in his palms, and the noise that hadn't stopped for a moment made it really irritable. Immediately, he activated his ability to shut their mouths. Advertisement then. In the hole where Diamante's left shoulder was previously knocked out, as well as his chin that was cut in half, the wound began to become serious, and at this time he could no longer suppress the injury. Coupled with strenuous exercise during this period of time after the injury. The wound on Diamante's left shoulder expanded, 
and it began to split from the edge of the cavity. The chin area was originally frozen by the sleeve of Shiryuki and could not shed blood. At this time, blood also leaked out. The sudden eruption of two heavy wounds aggravated the injury, making Diamante's mood even more irritable, and spending a while here would be really bad. Diamante looked at the situation in front of the navy that was afraid to move. He quickly let the remaining hands to destroy the power of the ship, so that the navy would not be able to catch up after they escaped. Hayden, who dared not act rashly at this time, immediately noticed Diamante's situation. It seemed that his attack was still effective. Diamante's face suddenly turned pale, and sweat began to ooze from his forehead. He knew that Diamante's physical condition at this time could no longer support him, so he wanted to threaten him with a hostage, so he hurriedly left here. However, Hayden, who observed this situation, still did not dare to step forward. He did not dare to bet that his speed could be faster than that of Diamante's fingers. So he could only stand still and watch Diamante's men destroy the power of the boat. Damn. Hayden's mood at this time had risen to the extreme, only a small cluster of flames could be ignited. Then, Diamante was right in front of Hayden, rolling a large group of seamen in his hands on the deck, and then taking them back to his own ship. BWGB, B, at the moment, only Hayden was left on the warship. Advertisement he did not dare to catch up, because on the ship slowly leaving this sea, Diamante was wrapping a group of marines in a thick deck, hanging them in the air standing at the end of the ship, staring straight at him. Diamante was afraid that the navy thought it could do it and rushed forward, because he couldn't swallow this breath. He would be so embarrassed by an unknown navy, and in the end he could only escape with a hostage trick. Hayden immediately understood from his eyes that he was provoking himself. Seeing time, every second passed. At this time, the distance between the two ships has become a black spot in the sight of both parties. Diamante estimated that the distance at this time should be almost the same, so he wanted to kill the group of marines directly, and then left here quickly. Thinking of this, Diamante gave a cruel smile, looking at the marines he held in his palms. I didn't expect your chief to be so naive, and actually thought I would let you go. He spit out this paragraph from his vague mouth. At the same time, he also mourned the navy's innocence for a second. The navy really thought that the uncle Diamante would let the navy go? Even though at this moment, the seamen did not understand what he was talking about. However, whether they can understand what the pirate is saying or not, they can also know from his expression that they are going to die, and the pirate is going to kill them directly. It's over, I don't want to die yet, in an instant, everyone immediately panicked, like piglets waiting to be slaughtered, and uttered heartbreaking screams. At this time, Diamante didn't care about the noise of the seamen, after all, they would be silent immediately. Chapter 119 Coming from the Sky, Coming from the Funeral of Hell Previous chapter next chapter advertisement but at the same time. In the sky above the ship that Diamante took, in the sky at an altitude of 7 or 800 meters. Hayden's figure did not know when he appeared here. He covered his figure with the help of the clouds in the sky, and followed closely above Diamante's ship. Similar to Diamante's idea, he wouldn't really believe that these pirates could do what they said honestly. And even if it weren't, he wouldn't just let them leave safely after killing so many seamen. The pirates did not let go of the navy's thoughts, nor did the navy let go of the pirates' thoughts. Just at this time, in Hayden above Diamante's head, he noticed that Diamante seemed to be getting rid of the seamen in his hand, and he reacted immediately. The spirit in the atmosphere immediately condensed a foothold at the top of his head, then turned his body upside down, his head and feet immediately changed positions and then both feet slammed on the created foothold. Hayden aimed his eyes in the direction of Diamante and broke straight down from high altitude. The howling wind slammed on him, and his clothes crackled. He didn't have any trouble because of this, and then from behind he took the sleeve Shiryuki, which was inserted in the scabbard, in his hand along with the scabbard. Hold the scabbard in the left hand, and hold the hilt in the right hand. Hayden concentrated all his attention, concentrated all his spiritual pressure, poured into Shu Baishui's knife. In a blink of an eye, his whole person seemed to have become a guest from outside, and he swept across the sky with a scream. The explosive momentum surrounding him at this time was captured by Diamante's keen sense in the next second. He stopped to get rid of the action of the seaman in his hand, and immediately raised his head to look at the sky, 
wanting to see what was roaring above his head. Then, advertisement in Diamante's sight, a figure suddenly appeared in the sky. He suddenly felt strange, and then took a closer look. That figure is actually the Navy just now, isn't he still on that warship? How could he fly so high? Diamante's eyes widened instantly, and he couldn't believe the scene before him. Seeing the menacing Navy, Diamante hurriedly defended. At this moment, just when he wanted to crush the seaman in his hand immediately, and then harden the deck and block it in front of him. In an instant, Hayden had arrived. Coming from the sky, coming from the funeral of hell. The mysterious power flowing, one sword and the profound meaning draw a sword. The knife fell out of the knife. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. A gleam of silver light flashed in front of everyone's eyes, taking away all the light from the world except for its own light. Hayden drew his sword and slashed out with lightning speed, and directly slashed out a giant flying slash of more than 30 meters. In the speed blessing of high speed falling, the power of slashing is even more powerful. The flying giant sword aura, as if everything in the world could not stop it, cut off everything that hindered its advancement. After cutting off Diamante's arm that was holding the marines, he chopped off a corner of the stern in a blink of an eye, and finally cut straight across the sea. At once, a huge gully with a length of more than 30 meters and a width of about 56 meters appeared on the sea. Hayden cut open the sea with a single blow, cutting into the sword air in the sea, and the remaining prestige also made the sea unable to restore its original appearance for a while, maintaining the scene of separation. Aha! Uh -huh. Advertisement All the people who witnessed this scene were shocked by this appalling movement and couldn't move. When have they seen such a powerful swordsmanship? The concept of swordsman in their minds still remains on the average swordsman cutting off the real thing. However, today it will completely change the minds of all of them. All the people who were shocked were frozen in place, until the cut open sea began to flow backwards and pulled their boat back, that they hurriedly recovered from their horror. You will die if you stay where you are, at this time, they knew the truth very well, and they could only run away quickly. As for Diamante, whose entire arm had been cut off, he had fallen on the stern deck at this time, in a pool of blood flowing from the wound on his severed arm. This is still the result of his being cut after avoiding the critical point in the final crisis. Otherwise, the slash that Hayden had just done would directly cut him off without any difficulty. There was a click. Hayden, who hovered over the crack in the sea, slowly retracted his knife into its sheath, and then looked at the ship ahead of him, and he saw Diamante's situation. Hayden really didn't expect this guy to avoid his slash at the last moment, which really surprised him. He was not very satisfied with the result of only cutting off one arm of Diamante. When Hayden was about to rush up to make up his knife, there was a scream on the sea below, and he immediately lowered his head to look at the sea below. The seaman previously trapped by Diamante appeared in the sea below. At this time, they were screaming in pain in a piece of water that was dyed red, and it seemed that Diamante had hurt them a little bit with his power. Immediately afterwards, in Hayden's sight, he also saw a huge shadow wandering down the nearby sea. Aquaman. Hayden immediately understood this situation and fell into entanglement. Diamante's group is fleeing this sea. Although seeing him bleeding heavily, coupled with the previous serious injury, it seems that he will lose his breath in the next second, but Hayden still wants to catch up and give him a shot. Advertisement It's just that the group of guys below, if they run to solve Diamante by themselves, they will definitely be swallowed by the Sea King immediately. Damn it! Hayden, who was silent for a second, suddenly roared without warning. After a while, Hayden gave up the idea of chasing Diamante and went straight down to the sea below to see if he could catch them one by one. The marines in the sea immediately saw the figure of the boss fall down, and they also began to shout for help. Boss! Boss help! Hurry up! Something seems to be biting my foot! The marines who fell into the sea, they were supposed to have good water, but under the circumstances at this moment, they behaved like a duck. Seeing their silly looks, Hayden didn't want to talk anymore. After that, Hayden returned to the warship with a tufted ball. Fortunately, this distance was not pulled too far. The seamen who recovered from this series of stimuli on the warship also began to repair the power of the warship, after spending half a day in repairing it. After experiencing this, Hayden did not want to continue patrolling, and then issued an order to return to the branch. In this way, 
Hayden returned to the 353 Navy branch with a group of embarrassed Marines. Chapter 122 Years in a Flash Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement as Hayden had a head-on conflict with Diamante, the highest cadre of the Doflamingo family, he also officially became an enemy of the Doflamingo family. Hayden then got news about Diamante's situation, and he did not die from his injuries. Some time later, Diamante was witnessed with only one arm left and a steel jaw attached to his chin. Hayden can only sigh, it can be said that good people don't live long, and they are left for thousands of years. In the process of fighting Diamante this time, it inspired him about Diamante as a person, and he himself remembers the clearest point. That is, Diamante was injured by Doflamingo's fall. Doflamingo said that after a bad road, Diamante asked where the road was without thinking. It directly, reformed, that small town and turned it into a sea of flames. At the same time, the North Sea. Seeing this famous name, the highest combat power of the Doflamingo family has become this appearance. Everyone is speculating that who has such strength in this North Sea can hurt Diamante into this appearance. However, Diamante himself did not want to say a word about his experience. Moreover, the Doflamingo family doesn't seem to want to track down the person who hurt Diamante, and strangely, it doesn't seem to intend to take revenge. However, even Doflamingo wanted to find Hayden's position to avenge Diamante. However, in this period, they were chased by Lieutenant General Crane and run everywhere in the North Sea. He had no extra effort to deal with Hayden while escaping. Back to Hayden. Hayden, who returned to his base after the end, encountered this unexpected situation on his first voyage. He didn't plan to take a group of hands with him on the next patrol. Advertisement The consequence of cutting off one of Diamante's arms is to directly offend the Doflamingo family. Although Hayden is worthy of head-to-head -head with Doflamingo, if he meets in the ocean next time, then it is likely to be directly against all the members of Doflamingo's family. On his side, he can fight alone, and the rest of the Marines know without even thinking that their strength is simply not enough to face those cadres. In addition, although the North Sea is very large, even if it does not meet the Doflamingo family, as long as it encounters other pirates, it is likely to directly lose most of the seamen. Hayden has always been on his own, and he himself knows that he can't get used to the feeling of sailing with his subordinates, and he doesn't want to directly lose most of the crew every time he sails. After consideration, Hayden decided to go out hunting to exchange points in the future, and it would be better to go out alone. When the hunting is almost done, he should be able to be transferred back to the Great Route, Hayden thought silently in his heart that a great route is the only way to become stronger. So that's it. As Hayden rode a silver horse to hunt low-level pirate groups in the North Sea, time flickered and passed by in a blink of an eye. But at the same time, because Hayden is alone, he is agile and maneuverable on the sea, he walks as he likes, and slips away as he likes. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. In the process of hunting countless low-level pirate groups, of course, I encountered the Numantia Flamingo of the Doflamingo family several times, the huge pink ship. Hayden was far away. You can see it at a glance. However, every time all the members of the Doflamingo family on the ship were basically complete, he wouldn't just silly and directly meet all their cadres. Hayden didn't have the strength to pick all of them, so he avoided it every time he saw it from a distance. After all, it is still a bit of a hassle to get points from them and it is interesting to find other low-level pirate groups to bully. When he returned to the base to rest for a few days, his staff brought him a news that surprised him a little. The murloc pirate named Fisher Tiger climbed with his bare hands to the world government sanctuary Marihoa, and had a great meal, liberating hundreds of slaves and burning the whole Marihoa. Advertisement Looking at the photos in the newspaper, the appearance of the sea of fire is amazing. The newspaper referred to this earth-shattering event as the Maria Joa attack. The murloc named Fisher Tiger became a major enemy of the world government and was hunted down by the government. Hayden, who heard the news, felt complicated in his heart. When I was wandering in this North Sea, the plot in the comics was happening quietly all the time. Looking at the photos in the newspaper in his hand about the incident, Hayden couldn't help but admire the Fisher Tiger, who made trouble with Mary Joa, inexplicably. Although Hayden himself does not have a good impression of world government or anything, he has lived in this One Piece world for so many years, he is very clear about the influence of the world government guys. Under this circumstance, Fisher Tiger, 
the person trapped in the prison of this special worldview of the One Piece world, even dared to do things that no one had ever done before, breaking this prison of thinking. The most important thing is that he seems to have rescued the Empress? Hayden's memory of the plot is really vague, he can't help but ponder his mouth seriously. After that, despite the big event that shocked the world, it had nothing to do with Hayden at the moment. Hayden took a look and then forgot it. Then, just keep hunting, get points, hunt, get points. Hayden kept repeating this process until the powerful pirates in this area of the North Sea could no longer provide them and could not exchange points. However, he has never chosen to exchange for anything else. In order to exchange for a big one, he has been accumulating his points. Even the raffle tempted him, and he has never drawn a prize. This continued until more than two years later. Advertisement. When they arrived in the North Sea, they began to fear a silver light galloping across the sea. As long as the pirates saw anything similar to Hayden's signs, they would not hesitate for a second. Run. The distance the Navy runs as far as possible. At this time, Marine Vatican Headquarters. General Sengoku's office. The Warring States period after hanging up the phone worm just now, he thought of a Navy figure in his mind. After a moment of silence, he immediately picked up the phone worm again, pressed his finger on a special number composed of several numbers, and the phone worm's signal was sent to a warship somewhere in the North Sea. Blue blue blue. Gaw clip. Then, a woman with leather gloves picked up the phone worm's microphone. Hello, she said. The warring states also immediately said, Little Crane, it's me. Intelligence update? Still? Well, Doflamingo's latest information, this time we'll definitely be able to wipe out the group of guys. It happens that the kid Hayden is in the North Sea. You will ask him to go with him later, and you can transfer him back when it is over. Oh, that kid Hayden, I ran into him a few months ago. Okay, that's it. 41% Chapter 121 Crane Calls Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement The High UN Calendar is 1511, the beginning of the year. This day. Floating clouds spread all over the air near the entire support, light and thick, dyeing the sky into an uneven gray cloth. The air was lifeless. Rather, the world surrounding the branch today was lifeless. Hayden did not hunt pirates in the sea as usual. After all, the pirates were mostly scared by him. Every time they saw him, they would flee desperately, and they couldn't provide them with points. In addition, it's been more than two years. Those guys above haven't transferred the master back to the Great Root. Master has nothing to play here. Master is still Nima's navy. Then, Hayden changed back to the appearance of a nerd, nestled in the branch base all day, eating and drinking, drinking, playing, playing and sleeping, and began to repeat such a daily routine. Patrolling the surrounding waters? Visit Naima? Boss, sign the document? Do it yourself. The men with headaches imitated Hayden's signature decently for this reason. Of course, they dare not do anything with the boss's signature. In the past two years or so, basically every time the boss goes out, he can bring back the pirates alone. In addition, the boss who came back basically did not have any serious injuries. Under such a situation, even if they were given ten courage, they would not dare to anger the boss. At this time, Bay High 353 Navy Branch in the dojo on the island. Advertisement in the huge dojo, only one person appeared in the center of the dojo alone. This person is not the other, it is Hayden. He was sitting cross-legged on the cold wooden floor of the dojo, with two Zanpaka knives lying flat on his thighs, one with Shiryuki's sleeve and one with Chibansakura. Hayden is trying to communicate the inner worlds of the two Zanpo Dao at the same time. To be honest, he still hasn't figured out how Chianbin Sakura got here, and he hasn't figured out how to use a Zanpaka sword himself, so he actually gave him another one directly. It is said that in actual combat, encountering life and death situations can increase their strength faster. However, in the past two years, there has been basically no life or death situation, which can be stimulated a little bit. In the two years of dull life, although the progress of the Wanjia solution has increased, the progress of the increase is almost negligible. With his eyes closed, Hayden tried to feel the Zan Po Dao, he seemed a little anxious at this time. Just at this time. Blue blue blue. The ringing of a telephone worm suddenly spread in this empty dojo. 
Read more at hotmtlnovel.zai. Hidden frowned slightly as he listened to the ringtones magnified several times in this environment. That guy is bothering me at this time, he thought. Didn't you tell those guys not to bother me at this time? Hayden frowned. Hearing the sound of not intending to stop by himself, he had to put the zanpaka knife on his leg on the wooden floor aside, then stood up and walked to the wall of the dojo, which is the phone worm. Place. Gap. Hayden picked up the phone worm. Hey hey, what's wrong with your group of guys? He said impatiently, the group of guys had no peace all day. However, Hayden didn't hear the reply for the first time, he only saw a strange, uh, voice. Advertisement he immediately thought to himself in his heart that it was that naive man who was doing a ghost, and when I caught him to see if I would not take him. Thinking of this, before Hayden was ready to speak, the voice of the person on the other end of the phone worm came over clearly. Ahem. Hayden, this is Lieutenant General Crane. Uh. It would be Hayden's turn to, uh, his upper and lower lips had just opened, but they suddenly stiffened, and what he wanted to say was stuck in his throat, but he couldn't say anything. Oops, why is the phone number of Granny Crane? Hayden was immediately frightened, not knowing what to do, and cried out badly. To be honest, he really thought it was those guys. Besides, he won't be looking for someone here for a few months, so who would call him? At this time, the voice of Lieutenant General Crane, who did not hear a response, came again. Hey, are people there? Little devil. Lieutenant General Crane's tone was somewhat puzzled. The embarrassed Hayden couldn't ignore the phone call of Lieutenant General He, so he had to endure the embarrassment and forcibly forget the matter just now, saying, Uh, Granny Crane, this is Hayden, what can you do if you call the bug? The Lieutenant General Crane on the other end of the phone heard Hayden's reply, and he pondered, Hayden, this time I have a task for you. Get ready to go and join us in two weeks. Okay. Hayden was a little puzzled, what will happen next? He subconsciously intervened and asked, What is Confluence for? The interrupted lieutenant general also didn't care. After listening to Hayden's question, he answered him, Which was the goal of this mission? Be prepared to fight the Doflamingo family. For this mission, our navy will arrest all the Doflamingo family members and kill them all at once. Hayden was suddenly stunned by the meaning revealed in the words. Lieutenant General Crane's plain tone, but said words that are enough to make all ordinary people in the North Sea happy. Is the Navy ready to clean up the Doflamingo family? Advertisement Hayden, who recovered immediately, flashed through his mind like a flash of lightning in an instant, and he suddenly remembered this vague plot. This period seems to be the cause of the fruits of the operation, which caused the Navy, the government, and the Doflamingo family to get together, and the Navy is preparing to clean up the Doflamingo family. Huo Ran immediately became excited when he thought of Hayden. If this is the case, it means that after the next encounter with the Doflamingo family, with the support of Granny Crane and the others, he can safely fight against Doflamingo. It seems that the guy Doflamingo of this period, seeing Granny Crane, only has the idea of running away, and dare not face it. In other words, try to test the strength of the fellow Doflamingo, and if you are strong, you will directly grab the head. If he can't match that guy, he can also save his life safely under the cover of Granny Crane. Hey, hey, hey. Hayden thought of this in the blink of an eye, couldn't help but laugh from his mouth. By then, the points should be enough, this is simply a foolproof method. He then couldn't help muttering softly. Hey, kid. What are you laughing at? Speak louder. Lieutenant General Crane's voice came immediately after Hayden's voice. Ah. Hayden yelled immediately, it's nothing, it's nothing. He hurriedly said, almost uttering his inner thoughts out of excitement. At this time, Lieutenant General Crane was already a little bit wrong with Hayden's way of speaking. Hayden was like this. She sighed inwardly, shaking her head. Boy, did you hear the mission I just mentioned? Lieutenant General Crane kept calm and confirmed to Hayden again, in case he heard the mission wrong. I heard it, I heard it, good, I will tell you the details later, that's it. Then, the end of the phone worm was closed. Hayden then put the microphone back on the phone worm. Finally have a chance. Looking at the skill tree in his mind, Hayden couldn't help thinking with a smile. Chapter 122 All Female Soldiers Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement Two Weeks Later Beihai 353 Naval Branch Hayden got up early in the morning and hurriedly made all the preparations. 
Last time, after speaking with Lieutenant General Ahe and Granny He, Lieutenant General He told him that he can leave today to meet them. They will wait for him on a small island, and then set off to the mission location together. Hayden didn't need to bring any more troops to support this trip, as long as he arrived alone. However, because of this, he had to ride a motorcycle on his own. The Beihai 353 Naval Branch is located near the Windless Zone, that is to say, the central area from the Beihai is a remote place. Hayden still has a long way to go. It is very comfortable to ride your silver horse on the sea for more than an hour. However, riding a motorcycle for a few hours or even more than 10 hours is not fun. This is really a painful thing for my little friends. However, Hayden didn't have any good way to make him drive in a comfortable state. So he had to swallow silently and left the 353 naval base under the wave of many younger brothers. After one day, Hayden, who was walking around at sea, followed the map and finally reached the predetermined meeting point. The upper body lying on the locomotive couldn't help but lift up at this moment. Looking at the navy ship in the distance, Hayden's eyes saw a comfortable bed, a warm bath and curry in the kitchen. Advertisement, finally reached, Hayden couldn't help muttering to himself. In the past, although he was alone on a motorcycle, he went out hunting pirates everywhere. However, before he rode out on a locomotive, and after seeing the first pirate ship, he immediately took the ship as his own, directed a group of pirates to fight other pirates, and finally let them take their own trap, and then he brought it back to the base. It can be said that except for riding off the scooter at the beginning, there is no need to ride it afterwards, and it is comfortable all the way. After twisting his stiff body, Hayden slowed down, took out the phone worm from the inner pocket of his clothes, and dialed the phone worm on the warship of Lieutenant General Ahe. Soon, the phone worm was connected. Hey, I'm Rear Admiral Hayden of the Navy Headquarters. The thing coming over from your ship is me. Don't fire. Repeat, don't fire. There was a moment of silence on the phone worm understood major general hayden a woman's voice came and then the phone worm hung up at this time many female soldiers on the warship docked on the shore also noticed that on the left side of the ship there was something galloping over the sea what it is read more at hot mtl novel .zai. is there something that can walk on the sea what special boat is that the female soldiers began to squint to see clearly what was coming from the sea at this time, the voice of their supreme officer, Lieutenant General Ahe, suddenly came into their ears, and then her footsteps approached the ship's side. That's the one we are waiting for, the one you saw a few months ago. Although Lieutenant General Crane's tone was calm, she also wondered in her heart, didn't this kid seem to have this thing last time? Watching Hayden's approach, Lieutenant General Crane shook his head and stopped thinking about this question. Now that the person has arrived, he can set off to the mission location. Advertisement then, Lieutenant General Crane turned and left the side of the ship to give the order to start. Soon after, Hayden rode a locomotive to the sea near the warship. Afterwards, he pulled out the sleeve of Shiryuki neatly, inserted the scabbard on his back casually, and stepped on the unbroken ice surface and got off the locomotive. The height of the warship made him look up, and then he found that there were many curious young ladies who were looking down at themselves on the side of the ship. There are still so many young ladies on Granny Crane's boat. Hayden thought to himself, with a smile on his face, greeted the young lady on the warship. Oh who? X-123456 The many female soldiers on the ship were immediately captured by Hayden's handsome appearance. The smile of the Major General in front of his mind seemed to be unable to dissipate. Everyone's face was flushed uncontrollably, and their bodies retracted, not daring to look at the Major General below. However, this is just a beautiful prediction in Hayden's mind. In fact, having been riding on the sea for so long, the hair with a big back waxed up before going out has already been blown into a chicken coop by the strong wind during the ride. Hayden was feeling strange. When did his charm become so powerful that he could actually smile at him? Then, when he was about to pick up his locomotive and take it on the warship, his inadvertent movement made him notice something. After lowering his body, the line of sight from the corner of his eyes allowed him to see the reflective parts on the body of the machine, which just happened to faintly reflect his current appearance. Hayden was silent. Damn, advertisement. Seeing the reflection of his own appearance, Hayden was surprised and hurriedly adjusted his current hairstyle. I knew it would be nice to install a rearview mirror. 
he muttered while cleaning up his appearance. Then, Hayden leapt onto the warship in front of him carrying the locomotive. With a sound of, boom, he stepped on the deck of this warship, before the coldness radiated. Under this violent sound, all the female soldiers standing on the deck were naturally attracted by the sound, and suddenly everyone's heads turned to the place where the sound was made. They saw a man with a coat of justice, two swords in his back, a handsome hairstyle and a handsome face, and a motorcycle on his shoulders standing on the bow of the boat, on the deck. Some people immediately remembered this sir that they had just met a few months ago, but the situation at that time was a bit different from now. And some female soldiers are simply temperament exuded by Hayden, hard to extricate themselves. Snapped, ouch, suddenly, two voices that sounded at the same time sounded in the direction of this man. As if something hit the back of the head, Hayden's specially recessed posture immediately collapsed, and he said in his mouth, rubbing the back of his head reflexively. Hayden knew what hit him, but he didn't dare to resist, so he had to say, Mr. Crane, why are you hitting me? Then, the figure of Granny Crane walked out from behind Hayden, be normal, she said solemnly. Her ship is full of female soldiers, so if Hayden, the little devil, stays for a few days, she doesn't know what will happen. Lieutenant General Crane thought to herself, she was a little bit distressed. After that, Lieutenant General Crane gave Hayden a formal introduction like a subordinate on the ship so that they could get acquainted with the rear admiral who will get along with them in the next few days. Afterwards, the warship moved slowly and headed for the next mission location Hayen Island. Chapter 123 arrived at the mission location Hayen Island. Previous chapter next chapter advertisement in the evening a few days later. Beihai, a small island closest to Hayen Island. The sky was dark on the night of silence, and the stars were all swallowed by dark clouds. At this time, two warships used to ambush the Doflamingo family have been hidden on the coast of this small island. As long as there is news, the two warships can rush to Hayen Island at the fastest speed and start fighting to capture all members of the Doflamingo family. One of these two warships is Lieutenant General Crane's warship, and Hayden, naturally, was also waiting for combat orders on it. Regarding this mission, Lieutenant General Crane didn't tell him too much, but just told him to wait, and when the time came, follow them to arrest the Doflamingo family. Moreover, Hayden had almost forgotten about this plot. He only remembered that this incident was a battle for the fruits of the operation. There is the Doflamingo family, the Navy, and the government trades with the pirate group holding the fruits of the operation. As for any other detailed information, Hayden really couldn't remember a little bit. Therefore, when everything in the world around him was still relatively calm at this moment, Hayden didn't dare to run around the nearby islands by himself, for fear that he would miss that opportunity and delay things. At this time, he had to wait quietly on this Lieutenant General Crane's boat. However, the warship under him had been waiting in this hidden bay for some time, which consumed a lot of Hayden's patience. He knew that while he was waiting here in a daze, it was very likely that the battle for the fruits of the operation had begun quietly. Advertisement The characteristics of the surgical fruit are quite troublesome. Those with abilities can create a sphere space in which they can cut, exchange, and splice anything at will. They can even exchange the minds of two different individuals, allowing one person's consciousness to be directly exchanged to another, on the body. The life cut off by the capable person will not die, or even bleed, even if it is directly cut into pieces, it will still be alive. The most important thing is that the legendary person who seems to have the ability to eat the fruit of this operation can perform the ultimate operation to give humans, eternal life, in the end. Although once this ultimate operation is performed, the capable person himself will die, but in this way, it is also good for the big figures in the world to want to find the idea of this fruit. However, to Hayden himself, the fruits of the operation were not necessarily attractive. After all, eating the devil fruit is equivalent to forcing a fatal weakness to oneself, and the gain is not worth the loss. However, in this mission, he was not only preparing to harvest the Doflamingo family to get points, he also came for the fruits of the operation. Not to eat it, but to come for its eater. Hayden didn't want the navy to get this devil's fruit, nor did he want the guys from the world government to succeed in the deal, and he didn't want the guy Doflamingo to grab it. Although he and Doflamingo hadn't really met them before, he had already decided to take Doflamingo to get the final redemption points. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. 
The fruit of the operation was finally eaten by Traro in the comics, but the original fantasy world became reality. Hayden was not sure that the final plot would really develop as in the original. For this reason, he must personally confirm the owner of the fruits of the operation. Just, just as Hayden was waiting to be confused, a female soldier under Lieutenant General Crane stepped hurriedly onto the deck of the bow, where Lieutenant General Crane and her adjutants, as well as Hayden, were in a daze. Lieutenant General Crane looked at the impatient look of Hayden in front of her. She was shaking her head secretly, but the voice of her men suddenly came. Lieutenant General Ahe. The sound of the female soldier sounded. Advertisement aroused the reaction of Lieutenant General Crane and several of her lieutenants, naturally also immediately aroused the reaction of Hayden next to him. Hayden hurriedly turned his head to look in the direction of the voice. There was a contact message from the surveillance ship on Miniwang Island, and a fire broke out in the base camp of Barreros, a sea thief on the island. What? This unexpected news immediately surprised Lieutenant General Crane. Then she did not hesitate. After signaling the female soldier to retreat, she immediately took out the phone worm and dialed the phone worm of the person in charge of the surveillance ship on Miniwang Island. The phone worm was quickly connected. What's the situation in Barrero's base camp? Lieutenant General Crane asked in an anxious tone. Yes, it is now being confirmed. The person in charge of the surveillance ship at the other end of the phone worm responded, standing on the shore of Miniwang Island. He has ordered his marines to start landing on the island, ready to check the specific situation. But this answer made Lieutenant General Crane's tone immediately stern. Stupid. If you go up, you will destroy the transaction. Go and search the lower coast immediately and report anything suspicious. Subsequently, the frowning Lieutenant General hung up the phone worm. However, when Hayden heard this from the side, he suddenly had no idea of wanting to wait any longer, since there is a big fire, it means that things have started. Grandma Crane, in which direction is Miniwang Island? Hayden walked towards Lieutenant General Crane and asked casually. Lieutenant General Crane glanced at Hayden, the island to the northeast is, wait. Having said that, she immediately understood what was in Hayden's mind and what to do. Advertisement however, she had just dropped the last sound of the word, wait, but Hayden others had already carried the locomotive out and parked it horizontally on the side of the wide ship that was large enough for the locomotive to stand on. Lieutenant General Crane immediately wanted to stop his actions, and said, you kid, give me honestly. It was the same this time. She was only halfway through when she was interrupted by Hayden's voice. I'll have a look, Hayden who was riding a locomotive parked on the side of the ship's gunnel, immediately started the engine and the wheels spun quickly after he waved his hand and said. Then, it landed on the sea and galloped straight toward the island in the northeast. On the sea at night, the sea surface is slightly calmer than in daylight. However, in the dead sea at this time, there was a strange sound of mechanical operation. Huh! Hayden rode a silver horse swiftly across the sea leaving a thin white line of ice on the sea behind him. A few minutes later, in his distant vision, an island completely covered by white snow appeared. Hayden wasn't sure he was looking in the right place. However, in the distant view, although it is impossible to clearly see what happened, on the mountain top of the island, it seems that a raging fire has risen, and billowing wolves have risen. It should be here, he thought to himself. Then, looking at the situation of the distant islands, Hayden increased the throttle. The Yinju under him immediately got feedback, let out a roar, and the speed of the wheels increased by one level again. Chapter 124 Rotating Fruit and Weapon Fruit Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement The sky is flying snow, flying up and down. The weather conditions on Minowang Island ahead are completely different from the other islands around it. There was heavy snow on one side of the sky, but calm waves on the other. Ten minutes later, Hayden rode a motorcycle into the snow-covered inland sea of Miniwang Island, and then he was already wrapped in a layer of white clothes for only a minute. No one likes this kind of extreme weather, even children who like to play in the snow can't afford to go out to play in this cold weather. However, this is a perfect combat environment for Hayden of the ice and snow system. With the help of nature, Shu Baishui's ability will be even better. At this time, Hayden had already boarded the coast of Miniwang Island on a motorcycle. He found a flat place and rode up all the way. Then he parked the locomotive on the spot and began to detect the aura on the island ahead. He wants to see if luck is in his favor. 
He hopes to be able to perceive exactly what happened on the island at once. However, just as his Ryatsu stretched in front of him for a few seconds. In Hayden's eyes, something seemed to fall in the midair of the island. That thing is very thin, it looks like a lot. He felt a little strange, as if he had never seen something before. Immediately, Hayden narrowed his eyes, trying to focus his gaze on what was falling in the sky. Suddenly, he didn't know how he realized what that thing was. A picture suddenly popped up in his mind, it was the picture of Doflamingo performing his trick, birdcage, trouble. Hayden frowned and hurried to the place inside the birdcage. As he sprinted, he took out the phone bug from the inner pocket of his clothes and dialed the number of Lieutenant General Crane. Advertisement soon, the phone worm was connected. Hey, Lieutenant General Crane, this is Hayden. The group of pirates from Doflamingo's family, they have all boarded Miniwang Island. Hayden's tone was serious at this time, and he didn't mean to joke. After all, the next thing is directly related to his life safety, and he dare not care about it. What? Lieutenant General Crane's voice seemed a little cold, she was not very surprised either, the unexpected situation of the Doflamingo family only surprised her a little. The guy in the Warring States period didn't know where the information came from, it seems that the enemy knew it. After a moment of silence, you, Lieutenant General Crane just said it, but she immediately thought in her mind whether the strength of Hayden, the kid, could delay time under the attack of all the Doflamingo family members. After thinking for a while, she continued, We will come right away. Don't act rashly, follow them and don't let them find out, report the situation at any time. Lieutenant General Crane's voice was firm, and at this time, he didn't allow Hayden this little devil to be foolish. Understand, Hayden replied immediately. Then both parties hung up the phone worm. After the call time was over, Hayden, just in time for the last moment, rushed into the range of the birdcage and climbed up the mountainside covered by heavy snow. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi, boom, boom, boom. The silk thread of the birdcage was like a cannonball, smashing into the snow behind him, and the falling snow splashed. The speed at which the birdcage fell was beyond Hayden's expectations, and he didn't want to be unable to get into the birdcage because of the speed. If you are blocked outside, because all the incidents happen in the birdcage, if you can't participate, you will be really dumbfounded. Then, he took a break, patted the white snow on his body, and eased the rhythm of his lower breathing. At the same time, Hayden looked up to check the situation of the birdcage. From the silk thread that shrouded from a high altitude, the distance between them was probably covering all the empty city in front of him. With such a wide range, is Doflamingo's ability already proficient to this level? Advertisement Hayden probably predicted his strength in his mind, and couldn't help feeling very tricky. Moreover, the current situation is not just one to one, and when they meet the top, it is likely to be against all their cadres. Hmm. How many cadres are there in their family? For a while, Hayden forgot how many reward orders all members of the Doflamingo family had. However, for Hayden, this unknown feeling is the best thing that stimulates the growth of strength. In Beihai's silence for more than two years, his two Zanpai knives could not contain his excitement, and he couldn't wait to cut some powerful enemies. Huo ran. Hayden closed his eyes and began to concentrate, then the spiritual pressure suddenly spread and stretched out. He started a Reimatsu search searching the surrounding area from the edge of the birdcage. Immediately afterwards, he perceives a large number of ray pressure points, but these ray pressure points are very weak, and it seems that there is only one breath left. These are that group of people? This question appeared in Hayden's heart, but he forgot it in a blink of an eye, and the spiritual pressure continued to extend. However, some strange noises were heard in the sky at this time, as if the propeller was spinning fast. Hayden then stopped the right pressure probe, opened his eyes, and looked up in the sky. Then, he saw a yellow thing flying in the sky above the snowy head. What is this again? Hayden took a closer look, and then realized that the yellow thing was a guy in yellow clothes flying in the sky. The propeller man? Suddenly, he thought of the flying guy in the Doflamingo family. What's your name? Hayden had forgotten, but that guy appeared to be wearing a yellow suit and able to fly with his abilities. Thinking of this, Hayden couldn't help raising a smile, and an idea came out in his heart. Advertisement huh? After a slight sound, Hayden's figure disappeared in the blink of an eye where he was just standing. 
Only the time before, the white snow falling on him was still hanging in the air. Immediately afterwards, Shiryuki, who had lost his attachment, instantly fell to the ground. And the disappeared Hayden, his figure suddenly appeared in the air. Bang! 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 He stomped on the air at high speed with his feet and jumped directly into the air. What sound? It's weird. The man with the propeller, that is, the guy named Buffalo, is a man with the ability to fly with a peculiar propeller hairstyle. There is also Lowly Baby 5 sitting on his back at the moment, a weapon fruit capable person. The two of them did not notice for the first time that someone had boarded their airspace and was not far behind them at the moment. They just heard a strange sound, and when they were about to turn around to check, huh, uttered a loud voice. Like the sound produced by the overcoat being blown by the strong wind, Hayden had stepped away and stood on Buffalo's back, next to Lori Baby 5. All this happened too quickly, but the two of them naturally noticed something was wrong. The two immediately turned around and looked at the place where the strange feeling rose. However, Hayden had pulled out Sleeve Shiryuki with his left hand, squatted, and aimed Sleeve Shiryuki's blade toward Buffalo's neck. The right hand is like a five-finger mountain, greatly holding Lori Baby 5's entire head in the palm of his hand. I advise you two not to have any thoughts of turmoil. At this time, the voice from Hayden that was very unfamiliar to the two of them seemed to be a whisper from a devil in hell. Chapter 125 The main show starts previous chapter next chapter. Advertisement, who? Both Buffalo and Lori Baby 5 had this thought in their hearts. Not to mention how this person was able to get into the air at their height, and the speed of this person's movement was so fast that they had two people, and none of them noticed any signs of his appearance. After such a terrible thought, a breath of death followed. The cold blade felt by the hair on her neck and the big hand holding her head, these different movements gave them the same breath of death at the same time. Don't mess around, this person will really kill me directly. The two of them now seemed to be able to understand each other's mind and thoughts, and their bodies suddenly stiffened. Buffalo's propeller was flying, as if no one was controlling it at this time, flying straight in a daze. Immediately afterwards, the voice of the unknown enemy rang in his ears. Obviously it was only a faint tone. At this moment, in the hearts of the two of them, they instantly felt the killing intent revealed in this person's words, and it was the kind of killing intent full of absolute oppression. Under this inexplicable deterrence, the two of Buffalo and Baby 5 at this time did not even dare to blink their eyes and held their breath unconsciously. At this moment, Hayden, who held the lives of the two of them in his hands, looked at the meaning revealed from the body language of the two of them at the moment. He was very satisfied with this and couldn't help rubbing Baby 5's hair. Hmm. It feels okay. He nodded to express his comfort, his mouth curled up, and he smiled slightly. It's a pity that Loli can't match his radio waves. Immediately, Hayden spoke to the two of them. He wanted to obtain information on Doflamingo's current location directly from the two of them. Advertisement. Where is Doflamingo now? Tell me this answer and you two will survive. Although Hayden's voice was calm, in the ears of Buffalo and Baby 5, he always felt the words filled with silence. After all, this man's sharp blade and his big hand have not been loosened at all. However, in such a life and death situation, Buffalo and Baby did not intend to tell him this way. The two were silent and did not speak, after a moment of silence. Hayden looked at the two men, as if not intending to tell him information, he was about to use further means. At this time, the phone worm on Baby 5 suddenly rang. Blue blue blue. Read more at hotmtlnovel.zi. The bell of the telephone worm rang. But Hayden did not intend to answer the phone worm, nor did he plan to let the two of them answer the phone worm. After ignoring it, he continued to open his mouth and forcibly asked both of them, Where is that guy Doflamingo now? I only asked this last time. Words fall. Hayden put the blade of Shishui's sleeve against the neck of Buffalo's chin, and gently drew a bloodline on his neck. At this time, Buffalo spoke, I won't tell you, he said. The tone of the speech is like, I'm doing this. What are you doing? Then, a gunshot suddenly sounded on the ground below, interrupting Hayden's further actions. Advertisement Hayden then looked down beside him. Immediately afterwards, he saw a fellow in the white snow world below, wearing a black feather coat, being attacked and chased by a group of five or six people, 
running to the flat ground on the top of the mountain. And the group of guys running around chasing people in black feather coats are the cadres of the Doflamingo family in Hayden's impression. Then, he saw another place on the top of the mountain, a guy in a pink feather coat was walking towards the place of Doflamingo's cadres. Now there is no need for Hayden to ask, and he doesn't need to think about what is going on. It seems that someone has been found. Thinking like this, Hayden retracted Shiryuki's sleeve and let go of Baby Five's head. In an instant, the sense of depression that permeated the two of them disappeared as the wind and snow drifted in the sky. Buffalo and Baby Five both felt strange right away. E.H., don't you ask? Buffalo asked curiously. The Baby Five next to him, at this time, dared to look up at the side with curious eyes. In the end, it was the guy who dared to make trouble for their Doflamingo family. However, with just a glance, Baby Five her whole body immediately stiffened again. Hayden glanced at the sluggish Baby Five, and after closing her sleeves, Bai Shui casually answered Buffalo's question. Your boss is down there. Finished. Hayden, wearing a coat of justice, jumped straight down. At this time, the sluggish Baby Five came back to her senses in a daze, and then she murmured two words that Buffalo was about to say. Navy, advertisement Hayden, who had jumped down, was like an intercontinental missile, shooting right into the middle of the battle scene below. In the sky at this time, there is not only the high altitude icy air, but also the heavy snow that seems to never stop. However, these cold and biting factors did not make Hayden feel the slightest discomfort, and even felt a little pleasant. It seemed that the sleeves on her back were shaking slightly, telling Hayden of her joy. In the process of falling continuously, the aura that envelops Hayden's body also continued to grow, and in a blink of an eye there was a scream in the air, like a sound that would instinctively tremble. Hayden's figure dashed across the sky at great speed. However, everyone below was aware of something in the sky, as if it was about to hit the ground in the next second. Hayden, however, controlled the ferocity of the descent. After a buffering action, he landed steadily on the roof of the place, spread his feet and squatted on the broken roof. In the space of this moment and this scene, except for Buffalo and Baby Five on the head, almost all the cadres of the Doflamingo family gathered on this snowy field. Torupal those with sticky fruit ability, Selka those with stone fruit ability, Diamandi those with fruit fluttering ability, Garadius those with fruit bursting ability, Mahabe. The ability to crush fruits, Rao Ji. Of course, there is also the young master of the family who stands among them at this moment Don Quixote da Flamingo. The future Kiwahai, a member of the original world's highest nobleman Tinlongren, and the clown of the underground world. He is an extremely alien pirate. However, after seeing the power of the four Emperor Kaido, he will become a flamingo, fearing the dragon. At this time, the few of them faced Corazon, who was sitting in the snow covered with blood, leaning on a pile of treasure chests. At the same time, he has another name Don Quixote Roseanne, who is Da Flamingo's brother. Hello everyone. Hayden smiled and greeted everyone in front of him at the moment, breaking the silence in the court.